How are you? How are you? Hanging in there. Hello. You guys are now live and recording. Okay. Um, it is 5.30. Let's get started. My name is Alicia Walker, and I'm calling this meeting to order as co-chair. Governor Baker's March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allow us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I'm calling the May 20th, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to an order at 5.31 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Present. Mr. Cage. Present. Ms. Ferreira. Present. Mrs. Owen. Present. Okay. I want to take a couple of minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public want to provide to the working group. We will not respond to your comments, but we'll listen to your comments carefully. Can you see the agenda? Yes, thank you, Ms. Morrison. Perfect. Um, we will then have a conversation about the budget for our recommendations, the memo sent by Mr. Vernon Jones and the last town council meeting. Next, we will designate the majority of our meeting to social service agencies and individuals to give us feedback on our recommendations. After, we will have um, a reminder of upcoming meetings. And lastly, we will wrap up with a brief discussion on where we are with the final presentation for the town council and the presentation for the finance committee. Our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any member of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moisson to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not respond to your comments, but we will be listening intently. Hi, Lev, you're somehow in here. I don't know how that happened. I'm gonna switch you out if that's okay. Of course, my apologies if I clicked on the wrong thing. And now I don't know which one of you I'm going to end up moving over. So we'll try this carefully. Oh, success. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Ms. Moiston. Um, and again, I just wanna open the floor to any public comments if there is anyone in the audience who would like to make a public comment at this time. I don't see any hands raised okay. at this time. Okay, so is it okay to just move forward at this point? It is, yes. Okay, great. This is the time for members to update us on any work they are doing or events that are coming up. Does anyone have anything that they would like to share? Hello, Ms. Pat. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ms. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I don't know that I need to be the one to share this, but uh, Alicia and Brianna and I all went to uh, the dispatch center uh, for police, fire, and ambulance and got an hour to see their operation and have it all explained by Mike Curtin, the, the head of the communication center there. It was very interesting. And I guess the other thing I'll mention is just in the last five minutes, 10 minutes, we have an email from uh, Lynn Griesmer with some questions from the town council. I don't, I'm not suggesting those have to be addressed in this meeting, but, um, and also a, a, a email from uh, Mr. Bockelman. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, does anybody else have anything they would like to share at this time? Go. <clears throat> Mrs. Pat? I'm just grateful 
for the community for coming out to support the work that we're doing at the uh, school, uh, at the uh, town council meeting on Monday. Um, it was um, very powerful and we'll see where that goes. Um, I wanna mention, um, is this the time to talk about the document that the three of you worked on? Um, so I was uh, going you, to bring that up shortly, um, uh, but I think I was going to bring that up shortly in the meeting. Okay. I think we have a couple of other things to address first, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. I just I wanted to make sure. I, it, yes. Yeah, so that's the only thing I wanted to share. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. So I guess for me, the only thing that I would want, because I know that you all went to the dispatch, so I guess at an appropriate time, maybe when we discuss the document, maybe if we can get a little bit more details in terms of what you all learned, that might be um, important for the, the kind of fine tuning of the CREST program. I'd be interested in hearing that later. Um, yeah, absolutely, Ms. Ferrer. I think that would be a great time that we would be able to share some thoughts with you guys and answer any questions that you may have. Um, does anybody else have anything they would like to share at this time? Are we going to be talking about uh, the presentation next week at all? Um, do we have time to do that at this meeting? Yes, so we are hoping to close uh, with a conversation about uh, the presentation for the town council as well as the presentation for the finance committee. Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Ferreira? Um, yeah, I want to say that, you know, obviously we have guests, so of course we're going to have to get to them after we talk about, you know, the document, the press document. But I do want to make sure that we do get the, the presentation for the town council and the finance committee. I think that's really important. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, so if anybody else has anything to share, now would be a good time. Otherwise, I will move um, forward in light of the time. Okay. Um, so for those of you who were not able to attend the last town council meeting, there was a public comment lasting for close to two hours with overwhelming support for not just the CREST program, but all of our recommendations. Um, as a group, we need to decide if we're going to keep asking for police positions to be held or if we are asking for everything that we want. Um, I want to open this to the group as it is important for Brianna and I to know as we craft impressionable closing comments with calls to action for the town council. Wait, can you, can you, I wasn't on there, so I didn't hear that. Can you provide a little bit more detail, I guess? What do you mean there was two hours of public support? I mean, so then what? I guess I'm confused. Yep, um, so the last town council meeting was uh, the first part of the budget hearing. Um, and so the meeting opened with a public comment section. The public comment section itself was almost two hours long. Um, and very many of the public comments were in full support <clears throat> of our recommendations, not just the CREST program, all of our recommendations. Um, and so uh, Brianna and I were going over the presentation last night, trying to make some final touches um, and decided that our, our closing slide should include a specific ask to the town council. Um, and so we wanted to open the floor to ask that as a group, like um, at the conclusion of our presentation, will we be asking the town council to um, for example, continue to hold the two frozen police positions to not increase the budget for the two additional positions or what exactly our ask will be as a group from the town council. Mrs. Pat? So, so uh, CSWG hired the seven gen and they made a very good recommendation of how to reduce um, the, pol the, the police force. And I think we should go with that recommendation. And it's, uh, you know, it's already done. I think we should follow that. Like a couple of years, it will be 50% reduction uh, in uh, APD. I'm very comfortable with that uh, recommendation. Thank you, Mrs. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I think we should, um, 
stick to our recommendation for next year, which I think in our report is that the police department be reduced to 43 sworn officer positions. And I think we should continue in front of the town council to recommend everything we recommended in our report. And with regard, I don't know whether everyone saw, with regard to the document that I sent this week, I propose we remove the budget pages from the end of that and only send the details about the CREST program. Uh, Mrs. Ferreira and then Mrs. Pat. Yeah, so I, I, I read all the documents and I know that before, I guess you all have submitted some type of budget that would have like, decre like decreased what we had originally funded. Um, but then I guess as you're saying, Mr. Vernon Jones, you know, you're, you're, you're back to um, supporting, you know, the budget that we had submitted because uh, I saw Ms. Pat's email saying that we had already submitted a budget and I'm in agreement with that too. So I was just waiting for the meeting to basically say that, yeah, we need to stick with what we already sent. And so for me, I don't think it's a question of either or, you know what I'm saying? It's a, qu it's a question of all of the above. You see what I'm saying? It's a question of them fully funding our recommendations that we recommended. It's about them freezing those, that, that, the, the, those two positions indefinitely and not hiring anyone new to the police department. No, you know what I'm saying? I don't think we need to be, you know, we don't need to be separating. We need to say all of the above, you know, um, because that's what needs to happen so that they can have the funding because they gave us pennies. So how are they gonna be able to, to fund us if they're not at least not hiring any or increasing the police department and so on and so forth, you know? So I, I don't think we need to be um, going on a either or, or really kind of being timid about it. We need to be very focused and be strong and say, this is what we need. This is what we're asking for. And they need to provide what we're asking for because this is what's better for the community, especially the marginalized communities that we're trying to make sure that their lives are better. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, Mrs. Pat, and then Mrs. Owen. So, I mean, the community has spoken, you know, I, I could feel the support on Monday. And so we need, you know, I'm agreeing with uh, Ms. Ferreira. We need to stick to the original budget that we put it on and then pick it back with uh, Mr. Ross. Um, I'm, I'm okay with the report itself if we take out uh, the budget. However, I would like us to, you know, discuss the Kahoot because the seven gen you know, we're concerned about Kahoot. I think the whole point of getting consultant to work with us, if we don't um, consider their, their recommendation, it will be almost like a, a slap in the face to them and also a waste, a waste of time. Um, I will agree to submit a report that to take out the Kahoot because it is controversial. There has been dirt uh, killings, even with that program. That's one of the concerns. So again, the majority goes, but I wouldn't support submitting the whole report with the Kahoot uh, on the report. Thank you, Mrs. Pat, Ms. Owen. I just wanna say, I think that we should ask for the full amount that we asked for um, because I did again attend the town council meeting and there was an overwhelming amount of support for our recommendations. And um, Lynn Griesmer, the president of the town council, just emailed us and they're already wondering what mile markers would exist for CRESS and how, how we're going to measure efficacy. And I don't think CRESS is going to be effective unless we fully fund it. Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Oh. Evelyn. Uh, yes, Ms. Pat. So I'm just wondering, does anybody have any issues with Kahoot program? Because I do, yep. Yes, Ms. Ferreira? Well, I mean, I guess, Ms. Pat, I think, I, you know, I definitely heard what um, Savage had talked about it, but I thought it was more kind of contextualized in terms of like, it can't be like, you can't have cahoots, right? You can't have a community, a, a, a responder uh, program like cahoots and still have, a, a, you know, a plenty, like a multitude of police that are armed you can't have both, you know what I'm saying? If you have both, you're still gonna have killings. That's the way I kind of interpreted it. I didn't interpret it as like cahoots was, was bad or something like that, you know? I just feel that obviously in terms of where, you know, you know, the place where cahoots was taking place, they didn't do what we're trying to do, which is right. We're trying to put things in place and then 
because now a lot of uh, calls are going to be handled by Crest, you need to make sure that the police are not responding to those calls anymore and that they're not going to be doing those things and lessening the police force. It has to be both. You know, it can be one or the other, because if you just do one and then the other one is still out there armed and 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 responding to those things. And that's why we need. Right. And I think that's the thing that it shows. I think the hoots really shows that we need a 24 seven fully resourced program. Because if you are still having the police respond to mental health issues and respond to wellness checks and respond to, you know, homelessness and substance abuse issues, you're going to have those same problems, right? So that's, I think, that's why I'm kind of like, I think it, it might be a good idea to keep that, to kind of really showcase the fact that you can't have both of them coexisting. Once one is in place, you have to decrease the other and you can't have that the police force responding to those to those complaints because you're going to have the same issues. So my my concern, okay. Um, Mrs. Pat, why don't you go ahead and then uh, Miss Owen, Mr. Vernon Jones, if you still have something to say. So my concern about Kahoot program is not the name Kahoot, but you know you know establishing trust and credibility in our community. Anything that has to do with you know armed force and police officer for people to get help. They're not going to, you know, they're not, they wouldn't like it. They won't trust you know, the CREST program. I also read at the report, and I think the two co-chairs and Ross, but I read in the report that we may vote on tonight um, that we, um, the APD will be helping with the training or something like that. I support the LEAP program even though I have a mixed feeling about having anyone with law, law enforcement background doing training for CRES staff, I'd rather have a BIPOC CRES director in place to help with the recruitment of responders, dispatchers, and training. I'm not saying that the director will train people, but to be part of the decision making as who you know, he or she will bring in to train this, uh, responders and, and dispatchers. And I read something about cell phone and I'm all for cell phone, but we have to have a dedicated space where there is, you know, a land phone as well with dispatchers. In addition to the uh, communication center, people will still call 911 and they can, be, you know, route the appropriate call to CREST program. And CREST program can still have its own number as well, but to just have cell phone only for press program, I think we should have in addition to cell phone, land phone or whatever. Also, I think we shouldn't settle for one van. It has to be two vehicles. I like the idea of having one of the vehicles to be handicapped and, and regular minivan. I like, I like that uh, proposal. So that I like, few things we need to flesh out with the report, um, hopefully tonight, but thank you guys. At least that will show the town council and the um, finance committee that we're really serious about this proposal, about this press program. That's all I wanna say. Can I just interrupt real quick? So um, Terry Mullins from Seven Gens is here to answer questions for, about cahoots if you need questions answered. Um, okay, I will ask the group, do, would you guys like those questions answered now? Is that okay with well, everybody? Maybe, maybe after this discussion, after. maybe, uh, yeah, after this round of questions, no, around cahoots. I think, I think it would be good for Terry to, to clarify, um, you know, the, what they shared around cahoots so that we can know whether we, we need, you know, we should include it or not. But I think let's finish up this round of, of questions before we bring them in. Okay, great. Um, I'm in agreement with that. Thank you, Mrs. Ferreira. Um, Ms. Owen? Um, so my, my comment with the CAHOOTS program, I think that the CAHOOTS program has limitations to um, promoting racial equity in the community, but I think that only supports our other recommendations with the BIPOC-led youth center and the um, BIPOC cultural center. So I have mixed feelings about it, but I do understand the limitations to the CAHOOTS program. Mr. Vernon Jones? I don't think anything in any of 
well, I think we made two important uh, decisions that make Crest different from Cahoots. One is we decided we wanted our Crest responders to be employees of the town so that we had control over who got hired and we provide the supervision. The other is that we decided we want a program with a consciously anti-racism focus. Uh, and those two things are very different from Cahoots. Uh, Cahoots is contracted to a mental health agency. And we, well, a third difference is we actually identify a broader range of calls that we think Crest can handle uh, than Cahoots currently handles. Uh, so I don't see us as using Cahoots as a, as a model at all. The only two references to, to Cahoots in the, the document, the details document, one is um, that we use them as an example of how many hours of training are required. And I did that because, you know, 500 hours is more, maybe more training than some people are thinking about. And it seemed like that was a useful uh, thing to be able to quote. And the other was uh, Cress's the Cahoots, because it's been around longer, is the best example of how much money can be saved by having community responders instead of police. Okay. So those two references, regardless of what we think of the CAHOOTS program, to me are still uh, relevant, the number of hours of training and the potential savings. But I don't see us copying CAHOOTS. Okay. You know, I see us with many differences from CAHOOTS. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Ferreira. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, you already heard me what I said about codes and I think, you know, again, I'd like to hear from Terry to see if he has any clarifying information, but I, again, I don't think it's a bad thing to keep it in there, uh, just to kind of show, as Mr. Vernon Jones said, and, and Ms. Brianna and, and Ms. Owens, that there's a lot of differences in terms of what we're doing, which is specific to Amherst and what others have done, but that doesn't mean we can't, you know, pick and choose. Um, but the other thing, though, that I wanted to make the comment of is what Ms. Pat had kind of started commenting to was this um, kind of further document around, um, you know, the detail. And thank you again, obviously, for, for sending us that um, and really thinking more about the detail around Crest, which obviously is important, right? Those are some of the questions that, that um, the town council may have and things like that. But I, I am in agreement with Ms. Pat when it's kind of like, as I was reading it, and I didn't make kind of specific notes on it. Um, I guess I should have, but I didn't. But I, I was seeing it very kind of heavily laden as like, you know, really kind of getting our, um, our, our crest getting its marching orders from the police, you know? So I think we need to kind of, you know, review that. I'm, I mean, I'm willing to review that again and send my notes, but like around the training and some other things, uh, you know, dispatch, I want it to be very clear, you know, in terms of dispatch, that there's gonna be another number. And then obviously it can also be dispatched from, from the police, but I, I don't want it to be looked upon as like a, a police um, addendum, you know, uh, that Crest is gonna be kind of like an, an, another arm of the, of the police department, because then we'll start it off right on the wrong, on, on the wrong feet, you know? And that's why, again, I say they need to, to fully support this, resource it, staff it, because if not, that's what it's going to be looked upon. And then and it won't be trusted, and then it won't be utilized, and then it'll fail. So those are the things that we need to be very careful on. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, do, when were we planning on sending this document to the town council? Did we have a date by which we wanted this to be finalized? Mr. Vernon Jones? Um, well, let me say first, I, you know, I've got the document in front of me and I did most of the writing on it. I can't imagine where, I, I don't understand where you think this is about the police. If there's nothing in here about the police training them, um, the law enforcement advancement project is, you know, if you've read their report, that is, they, they have some police officers on staff who are uh, total converts to the um, community responder program, but they are not a police outfit at all. Um, if we- I guess like for one, I guess, Mr. Vernon, sorry for cutting you off, but yeah, like, no, I guess ahead. for one, like for me, like the dispatch, right? 
you know, in the long term, Crest will likely need its own dispatches. But for FY22, the Crest responders will be dispatched by the existing 911 operators and dispatchers. We'll develop clear criteria and decision trees, blah, 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 blah. This will involve identifying the types of needs and indicators. I mean, I get that, but it's just like, no, we need to train some dispatchers that are going to be also, you know, dispatching directly to the Crest program. You know, we can't just rely on the dispatchers from the, the police. So that's one, I mean, obviously, like I said, I didn't write like all the specific things, but there's different little areas that I think, you know, we need to kind of be clear and we need to kind of really, you know, clearly state that this is what we're looking for. Can, can I make a proposal? Can I make um, a proposal? Yes. I, I think the sooner we, you know, this document is sent to the school committee and to the town council and the uh, finance uh, committee, the better. If I may, I wonder if this is like too much to ask if uh, Ms. Ferreira and Mr. Ross can like let us, you know, work on this and send it out tomorrow to them. Or do we have enough time to do it tonight? I can, I can kind of go through it, Mr. Ross, if you want, uh, after the meeting and just send you like my, my kind of notes and stuff if you want. Mr. Vernon Jones? Um, yeah. Well, let's see, let me, let me comment first about dispatch. You know, 911 calls are gonna all go to the same place. So whoever's answering 911 calls needs to be able to um, refer calls to Cress. Um, and the, I, I, I don't see any way around that. You know, I mean, that you, you, somebody, some people are gonna call 911 and it's gotta be, so whoever, whoever answers, uh, whoever they work for uh, has got to be, uh, able to get get our calls to Crest. And then we need a direct line as well. Um, as far as, you know, I, I'm in agreement with this, Pat. I think the sooner we send this, the better. And uh, because I, I think it's important that we allay whatever concerns there are on the part of the town council or the finance committee that there aren't enough details worked out to go forward with the program this year. I think we have more than enough details worked out for that. Um, the issue is that we, um, we want this to be sent from our whole group. And this is the last meeting uh, at which, um, you know, by the next meeting, it'll be too late. Uh, it'll be after the town council meeting and it'll be too late to get it to the finance committee in a timely manner. But if you wanna delegate uh, you know, if you're in general agreement and want to delegate uh, working out the fine editing details to Deborah and me, I'm happy to do that. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, or if, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to go with the, you know, with the majority of the group too. I mean, if everyone else is, is comfortable with it, I mean, we can move it forward. I don't have an issue with it though too. It's just that I think like in terms of trying to fine tune, I just don't want us to pigeonhole because remember, again, we don't, you know, we're still trying to, to um, really flesh out this. I, I, I just feel like I don't want us to kind of rush so much and provide all these details when we, we really need some time to also write, to flesh out the details, you know what I'm saying? Because remember what we put in, in writing is what they're, go what they're gonna hold us to. You know, and this program is gonna be very much alive. It's gonna be very much changing. So th that's the, my only reservation in terms of trying to be too, too quick about, okay, let's, let's just throw it out there because what we throw out there is, is gonna be what it's gonna stick, you know? So that's the other part. Uh, but again, you know, I know I'm more, you know, I, I like to kind of be cautionary about some of these things, but if the will of the group is, hey, let's throw this out there because we, we need to get something to them because they're asking these questions, um, then do it. But I have I have caution with some of that. Miss Pat and then Miss Ellen. So that that's actually not what I'm saying. Like um, there are some wordings in the report that I'm very uncomfortable with. There's nothing in the report that says that the BIPOC director will participate in recruiting and training responders. 
and um, things like that. Just to remind us that Terry is, you know, in the audience, and we don't know what his schedule looks like this evening. If we want to ask him questions, so that we don't lose him on Kahoot. Um, Miss Owen, if you wanted to respond first, and then we can uh, move into more questions if that's the end of that conversation. Um, so my only thing about fleshing out the details is I do agree with uh, Miss Ferreira. Like I do feel like we are kind of rushing it, and what we throw out is once it's out there, it's out there. But on the same page, I'd feel like uh, I feel like I as a group we've been in limbo as to the expectations that we're supposed to meet, and I'm still a little bit confused. On, on what? On what? Brianna? For me, I'm just confused on our role with town council and why we are rolling out like these details right now. Are we giving the town manager a vague overview of the program we want or are we giving him details? I would prefer we give him details so it's the program that we envision and we are able to incorporate our lived experience and the experiences of people in the community who are connected with, but also we're just on such a tight timeline. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I think I think that's the the, the kind of thing that Ms. Owens kind of made it clearer for me. I guess that's the thing, you know. I think it's just kind of like, you know, we have the town council meeting and then the finance committee meeting, and it's kind of like, okay, you know, we not only like provided you the report, which was our charge, right? It was the report and the budget, the recommendations, but now it's like, but now you also have to provide all the details, like you know, now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I don't think that that's fair. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm fine, I guess, to do it. But again, I, you know, it, what do we put out there? Gotta stick with. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, my fear is that whatever people say about what's required, that we will have people vote against us because they feel we haven't figured it out far enough. And I think we figured out a lot. And this document is an attempt to sort of say all the things we've talked about and figured out. Um, I think if the group would uh, approve it in general and leave it to Ms. Ferreira and me to try to do some edits over the next few days, that we could um, be, resolve some of the things people have been concerned about. We can make it clear at the beginning of the document that. Uh, these are our answers, uh, or these are the, the this, is, this is the way we conceive it now, and that exactly how it gets set up will need to be developed over time with the involvement of the Community Safety Working Group. And I think with a, an introduction that keeps us in the role of being involved in working it out and says, you know, sort of, here's, here's one way it could look. Uh, and I think that Ms. If, if people are comfortable with that, that Ms. Ferrer and I could work out uh, other issues in the text. Uh, Mrs. Pat, Mrs. Owen. So I would like to see, you know, and I'm, I'm fine, you know, for both of you to work on it. And I would like to see the, the final version, you know, before we send it out to the uh, town council and the um, finance committee. But there are some language definitely that I'm not going to agree with. I don't think we should be in the business of having the APD do any type of training, period. They should not, we, we can still, uh, Crest should collaborate with the APD, but they should not be providing leadership is the point I'm trying to make. It should come from the Crest BIPOC director. It's a non-starter, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Mrs. Bowman, and then if I might make a comment. Hi, everybody. Sorry for being late. Um, I agree with Ms. Pat. Um, at no point do I feel like the AP, APB should be, uh, APD, I mean, should be um, trained, um, on, even if it's on the beh behalf of um, Cref. I really think it needs to be um, it needs to be it, it needs to be um, non non-police um, 
people. And I say that for a couple of reasons. One, um, I feel like we need to, um, I talked about this before about having people who are involved in this program, trying to keep them local to this area um, and, and, you know, there you run into that when, when I, I just, I really think it should be local. It should be local because when you're local and you live here and you have the potential to experience things here, you have a different understanding of, you know, what, what's going on versus if you live elsewhere and then you're coming here for work, it's a different, it's a different vibe. It's a different energy. You come, you come, you do your job, you leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that makes, I feel like that's one of that. Those two things are really big for me that it needs to be, it needs to be our local community and it needs to not be officers. Officers were already trained in a certain way. I don't care if you go and you tr they train in something else. They still, there's still a mannerism. There's still an energy. There's still like, for lack of a better term, the blue code. The, that is still good, that, like you, you're not just gonna take that away. If you were gonna just take that away, then we wouldn't have so many officers having a hard time reporting officers who are doing bad things to community members. So in no way do I trust training an officer to be running or anything. Like I just, I have no interest in having them be part of this program except for you know the need to like the need to like we know I know we need to go through 911 I know that usually goes to the police department I know that needs you know and but I feel like I feel like we're we're treading on very thin water to involve them much more than just that so I don't know Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, and if I might make a quick comment and then Mrs. Owen and Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, so I just wanted to state my agreement with um, Mrs. Owen's comment earlier and that I'm uh, sort of feeling a little bit conflicted about these things. Um, on one hand, I believe we, we were all sort of very eager and ready to come up with details and were instructed to give a vague idea of the goal that we would like to accomplish with this program rather than to flush out the actual details. Um, and now that we're coming to the, the end of our work, we're being asked about the details. So I do understand Mrs. Ferreira's hesitation with throwing everything together, but, I, but this was not our fault. Um, and I don't think we anticipated having to come up with these details at the last minute and that we would have had these um, thought out ahead of time if we would, have, had, we would have known that this is what they would want. Um, and then I also just wanted to suggest that if we do decide to have Mrs. Ferrer and Mr. Vernon Jones work on this, um, aside from the group, that you take into consideration the email that we received just shortly before this meeting from um, Lynn, who is the head of the town council, because she actually sent us questions specifically from the town council um, that you may be able to answer in editing, because there was questions specific to dispatch, questions specific to hiring, um, and so I think that if there's a way to also answer those questions, or if there's a way for us to discuss those things at the end of this meeting, that that would be helpful in you guys completing that document and answering sort of all of the questions and gray areas for the people who are skeptical about this program. Um, and I also just wanted to suggest if possible that we, move the rest of this conversation to after um, meeting with the social services, because I think that this document itself is really close in hand with the final presentation and the presentation to the finance committee. And that some things that come up in that discussion may influence the information that's also put into that document. Um, but then I would like to pass um, the floor to Ms. Owen and then Mr. Vernon Jones. 
I'll be really quick. I'm completely okay with Mr. Vernon Jones and Ms. Ferreira working on that draft. I just wanted to say, um, while you guys uh, look over the details for all of that, I'm wondering if you can include in this document that CRESS is an alternative to policing. After attending the last finance committee meeting, it seemed that there was a little bit of confusion as to CRESS falling under social services. And it just goes back to our charge. <laughs> and CRESS, again, is a program that is al alternative to the APD. So I just want that to be emphasized in there. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Mr. Vernon Jones? Yeah, I certainly agree with what Ms. Owen just said. And yes, we can certainly do that. And I also totally agree with what uh, Ms. Bowman said earlier. We're not talking about retraining police officers. I don't think anybody on this group has ever seriously entertained that idea. And that's not, uh, it's not any, there's nothing in this memo that suggests that that would even be a possibility. There's also nothing in this memo either about the APD being involved in training. Um, and uh, just a further step about dispatch, the dispatchers are not police officers. Um, and the, we, the time we spent with them, they, uh, and they, they were, um, Mike Curtin was very good about the possibilities of um, the computer system being used in a way that kept Crest records completely confidential from the fire department, the ambulance, the EMTs, and the and the police. Um, so I'm I'm in complete agreement with everybody's statement about the importance of. I mean, we want a good working relationship. You know, we want the police to to rec to refer calls to uh, to Crest, uh, but uh, we we certainly don't want a police tone or training or uh, perspective uh, informing our CRESS responders. The whole idea of CRESS is to have a different perspective and different skills and different responders. Is it time now to bring in Terry? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I should say one other thing. Um, I have a conflict and I'm not gonna be able to stay past uh, seven o'clock tonight. Uh-oh, uh, okay. All right, so. Ms. Ferreira. So I guess, so I guess just so we can finish this off before the services, especially if Mr. Vernon Jones has to leave, I guess, so when, so I know that you all want um, Mr. Vernon Jones and I to kind of look at that this, this document, um, and kind of flesh it out and really kind of put in, make sure that it has the, the language that, that comports with our recommendations and things like that. So by when, because again, I'm feeling very rushed and I'm, I'm gonna be out of town like Saturday into Sunday, I'm out of town. So, so like, when are we supposed to do this so that, and when are we supposed to be getting this to the town council? <laughs> it's my, if the meeting is on Monday. So, I mean, again, I can, I can, put up my ideas in terms of things and my thoughts or whatever, and I can send it to Mr. Vernon Jones, but then, you know, I have a bunch of other things I need to get to, so. Um, thank you, Ms. Ferrer. I just wanted to say that we did also receive an email from the town, the Lynn, the head of the town council, stating that they wanted our presentation and all of our documents actually today in preparation for Monday's meeting. Um, and so we did ask them for a little bit more time, but as soon as possible is um, what I'm getting from the town council. They would like the documents as far in advance as possible. Mrs. Pat? So I was just saying that I will write, I would like to, you know, send my comments to both Ms. Ferreira and uh, to Mr. Ross, because I do have specific concerns that I have with the report is what I was going to say. Will it be too much for both of you if we say, by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Is that too much rush? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the thing. I think what we could do because the thing is, though, you all want to look at the final final document. So, you know, I think why don't we do this? Why, Miss Pat? Why don't you send your comments or anyone else that has any kind of comments or even questions, answers to questions that that uh, you know Miss Lynn asked and everything. I think just send that to, to Mr. Tonight. Russ. I'll, I'll send, yeah, tonight, and then I'll send my comments. And then Mr. Russ, if you have anything to kind of share with me in the morning, but we have to get a final to you all before then, right? Because we're trying to get this out. 
what about 12 noon to CSWG and then 3 p.m. to the school committee? Uh, oh my goodness, yeah. to the town council yeah. and um, finance committee. What do people yeah. think? I think that's what we'd have to do. Does that work for you, Mr. Vernon Jones? Well, I'm willing to work late tonight, early tomorrow, most of the day tomorrow from what, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm in a conference, um, but wow. I, could, I can do it after that. Another possibility is to, you know, our presentation, if, if we have this done uh, in time to send it to the finance committee, uh, but don't send it in advance to the town council, we could use it in answering questions from the town council uh, without giving them a last minute document. The town council meeting is really about our whole proposal. And this document is just about Cress. Um, the finance committee meeting is really just about Cress because that's the only thing that's you know, in the budget basically at, <clears throat> at this point. Um, but I'm willing to work late tonight, early in the morning or tomorrow night uh, and get it out, whatever works for everybody. I'll get my questions tonight. I'll send it to, to both of you tonight. I can also do the same. Yeah, we can all do that like tonight. And then um, tomorrow we can work on, well, I guess in the like early morning. <laughs> well, what's your schedule, it? Deborah? You said you were tied up tomorrow Yeah, as well. I mean, yeah, because, you know, I, I work <laughs> starting at like nine o'clock. I'm at work, you know, so it's really like tonight. And then, you know, later in the evening. Yeah. OK. So I think we just need to get all our comments in tonight and then we can see. But I'm saying like, so if you all get do we need to send all the documents to the town council to at the same time, or can we get it like, like let's say late in the evening? Can we send them everything tomorrow evening? What no, did they say? Do you, Mr. Ross is in a conference till 9 p.m. You said. Well, I I can work from six or seven in the morning until nine in the morning, uh, and I probably could get an hour lunch hour as well. If. It's up to two of you. It's up to you and Ms. Ferreira. Deborah, would you have a little time in the morning before work tomorrow? Yeah, I could probably have a little time. Yeah, like maybe like eight to nine. Because <laughs> sure. I have to put my kids okay. on the bus and all this stuff. My youngest, I have to put them on the bus. Okay, let's, let's assume we get things tonight. I'll work on it tonight. And then you and I will have an hour together, eight to nine mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want us to lose Terry, or, or unless if you want us to, if you, they can also send comment to us. Yeah, and then we'll send it to you all. We'll just send it to you all so you can, can look at it and then, then we can finalize it and send it out to the town council. I'm talking about Terry. He's, I think oh. he's waiting. If it's okay, I was wondering if we can reach out to Terry and see um, if they would be available after we speak with the social services, because I think the answers for the cahoots will be for um, our final presentation and for the content and information that we use for that, um, but that we do have um, attendees in the audience looking for the social services conversation. So if that's, is that possible to find out, Ms. Moyston? Um, yes, Terry, could you just please raise your hand if you're going to be here throughout the meeting? And it looks like he did that, or they did that. So yes. Okay, uh, so if that so if it's okay with everybody in the group, just in light of the time, I would like to move on and then we can double back to this conversation afterwards. Okay, great. Um, and so just before closing out the conversation and moving to the social services feedback, um, I would like to take this time to speak on behalf of the group and recognize all of the work of Ms. Moisson and all of the help that you have provided the CSWG finishing part A of our charge. 
we're so very grateful to have you and appreciate all of the work you have oh, done. Thank you. Um, and we wanted to ask at this time if you would be able or interested in joining us at our presentation on Monday. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I was going to watch it anyways, because, you know, all the time invested. So yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mrs. Moyston. Okay. Um, and so at this time, I would like to welcome the organizations one by one to answer the social services questions we put together prior. After each organization presents, we will leave time for group members to ask questions. Um, so is it okay at this time, Ms. Moyston, to welcome organization leaders and organizations? Um, Ms. Greeny, founder and executive director at Amherst Community Connections. I don't see Wailing here though. Okay, let me see. Um, we also have Lev Ezra from the Amherst Survival Center. And if she's under Brianna. Brianna. I sent Lev my um, panelist Zoom link, so I apologize. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's why Lev is showing up as Brianna Owen. <laughs> yep, here she is. Hi, Lev, welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Great. Um, I am so sorry. I am looking forward to speaking with you all, and I'm wondering if you could go to another um, organization first. Um, I had a, a, a kid who got hurt, and I'm listening in on this call as I get home, and I should be able to be more focused in a few minutes, but would respectfully ask if another organization could go prior. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> um, do we have Martha Hanner and Marcy Sklove from the League of Women Voters Racial Justice Task Force in the audience? Can we bring them in please, Ms. Moyston? Hello, Marcy. Hello, Martha. Thank you guys for being here today. Um, I think uh, we sent you a few uh, questions in advance in preparation for this meeting. And so I'm just going to pass the floor over to you guys to go over your responses. Hi. <clears throat> um, first, I just really have enjoyed um, all the work that you've been doing and getting to sort of know you just through these uh, exchanges and, and observing you um, on the screen. I'm a little, um, a little confused because we're not really a social service agency, the League of Women Voters, and we don't fit into any of the categories that would answer, like we don't, um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I'll do my best. Maybe Martha, you can chime in too. Uh, so Martha and I are both Amherst League of Women Voters members, and we're also um, part of something called the Racial Justice Task Force. And this is a, I'm the chair of the task force, and there's about nine, 10 of us. Um, we started last summer, and uh, this was a recreation of a different committee of the league that looked at um, social at local social action and also social justice work and we sort of refined it to be racial justice work um, and we've we've done a few different kinds of activities and uh, we've put out a, a few reports one of which i'd like to share with you not in detail but just tell you a little about it um, martha sent it uh, to you in advance of this meeting because it's about hiring yeah or how to do um, racial justice and more diverse hiring. But uh, we don't really serve a population. We, um, 
We like to think that we hold the container for democracy. That's sort of what the league, in my vision, that's what the league does. It creates opportunities for education in terms of like elections and candidates nights, who are the candidates, hearing from them. It's a nonpartisan organization, so there's never any um, sort of, you know, being for one candidate or another, but just to inform everyone and educate everyone. Uh, we do a lot around voter registration and trying to get more and more people registered to vote, educating people about voting, educating people about, you know, the different things that are on the ballot, etc. And we don't really, you know, so those are the services we provide, education, information. Uh, we, we ran a event in March where we brought together different groups working on racial justice in Amherst, trying to kind of get the silos um, dissolved a little bit because they're really important groups grassroots groups that are doing important work, but like they don't always interact with each other. So we created that um, opportunity for 185 people came to this event on Zoom and, um, you know, heard from the different groups about issues that were difficult for them. We are in the process of trying to um, create a network of different groups working on racial justice stuff. And we've invited you all to be part of that network. Um, so we don't work with the Amherst police. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know, trying to answer these questions. Um, what changes would you like to see? I can only speak for myself. We don't have as an organization a, um, kind of a list of services that we'd like to see, but there is a definite policy program from the league on racial justice, on um, social justice, on, I think, Martha, is there one on policing? I'm, I'm not sure if there's specifically one on policing, but generally speaking, the league is definitely in accord with the work that you all are doing. Um, Let's see, there's a lot of issues that have not been addressed in town. I mean, it's a little awkward for, we didn't really understand how you, to what end you were inviting us tonight. And uh, we spoke want... before this meeting to try and kind of figure out how we wanted to present ourselves to you and to ask you what you need from us, how we could support you. Um, but that's not really following the template of what you're looking for with this list of questions. So I don't wanna sidetrack, you know, your agenda, um, but we gave you the indicators report that talked about data and the lack of data in Amherst. That was a very important recognition that we discovered last summer that that in itself is evidence of institutional racism, that there isn't, you know, the foundational understanding of where we are as a town on certain fundamental issues, questions around race. Um, and this new report that we just did is on hiring. And it's based on one of our members' experiences where as the executive director of a nonprofit organization, she was, she and her staff were able to um, increase diversity by 40%, which was quite a big deal. And there was almost like a step-by-step -step way that she shared with us. And then our group created a document to kind of set that, that up. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we support Cress individually, although we haven't as the league uh, made a formal statement, and that goes through the steering committee of the league, and there's a whole process for that. So Martha and I and the others, there are others from our group on this webinar as well. Um, 
And, you know, so at this point, we're informally here as the Racial Justice Task Force, but we're not formally in some way making a statement for the league. Um, that said, we do intend to write a statement of support about what you're working, you know, what your proposal is for, for town um, changes in, in policing and all of this. And uh, that is something that we will be working on and, and getting approval from our steering committee and then having it, sending it to the council, et cetera. Okay. Does that, Martha, do you, you want to? Yeah, I could say a couple of things. So I'm Martha Hanner and um, we moved to Amherst after we retired. So I don't have you know a, a long history here. I'm an astronomer by training. So maybe I'll give a cosmic perspective or something a little bit. But uh, I mean, I think that uh, what you are doing by proposing the CRESS is just so significant. I mean, it's really a paradigm shift. It's something that really is starting all over the United States. And you know, we can help be in the forefront and you know, help make it happen and you know, help make Amherst be, be part of the change going forward. And so I would say the important thing to emphasize to the town council and the finance committee, but you know, to the town in general, is the significance of this as just a, as a change in focus, a change in emphasis, and and make it you know just as positive as as possible that way, and um, you know the decrease in the, the policing will be you know a natural consequence, as I see it, of of the work that then Crest slowly but surely takes over. It's also going to be a long and careful process to bring it about. I mean, as I read your report, I said, my goodness, you know, the, the kinds of special training and expertise that's going to be needed uh, by the people who are organizing crafts, becoming the directors, getting it going, uh, the training that's going to be, need, be needed for the participants is, you know, really significant. It's really going to take time. And I suppose the other thing to emphasize now then is the need uh, for, you know, the substantial enough budget for this year to, to bring in, you know, at, at least, you know, a couple of the really well-trained people to, to help get this going. Uh, that would be my, um, Two, two messages there, the, the, but, but this is really just so significant getting uh, Crest started. Uh, it's really important that we do this. Um, the other recommendations too, I think, uh, you know, as I see them are, are important and will come in due time and so on. Uh, but again, we have to say that at the moment, you know, please don't say the league is saying this yet because, you know, I think you understand that because we, you know, strive to be nonpartisan and so on, we do have a process we have to go through before we can, you know, uh, make a, a public statement. We used to do this even when we were supporting town meeting uh, articles, we had to go through a process and, and, yeah. and so on. So uh, yeah. we just have nothing but admiration for all that you've been doing this year. You've really worked tremendously hard uh, and yeah. uh, we just want to hear from you uh, what specific things we could best do to help. Uh, we do intend uh, to, to make this, this diverse, hiring diversity memo one of our uh, focuses over you know, the coming months and so on by, by talking to members of our boards and committees and, and helping to um, bring about uh, some change uh, to increase diversity and so on in, in very specific tangible ways and yeah. would welcome your suggestions on that. But I guess now just any questions you would have or comments of what you wish we should do? Well, I have a couple more yes. things. Yes, oh, okay, excuse me, yes. I'm looking at my notes from our meeting earlier when we were trying to kind of anticipate what you would be asking of us or what we could offer you. and. Um, the first thing I wrote down was how can we help? How can we help support you in your work? And then in terms of meeting up with the council and meeting with the town manager, 
you know, hearing this conversation prior to this about the specifics of CRESS and how it would, would work and how the training would happen, all of these specific things, like you're right, this wasn't your charge to come up with the details of a brand new program. I mean, that's asking a lot of, uh, you know, especially given your time constraints, it just seems somehow, you know, very difficult and unfair. But the question to me is, is there agreement? Can there be consensus agreement between the council and you all about the principles that you are offering and the principles of CRESS and the principles of the other wonderful programs. Um, I, I just, I feel like that is the big picture that if you, it, you know, and I'm saying me, but we all kind of thought this way. If you can get the council to agree on the principle then where the money comes from, what is the process of creating a brand new program? Does it take five years or one year? You know, I mean, it's a big deal to make such a big change. And I'm not saying it should go slower. Um, and uh, I just really, I, I feel like that, that is what's important is to, is to get a sense of, of, of that agreement. And, um, Let's see. There was just one other comment that one of our members was making about using the word civilian in your language. Um, so I'm not really answering your questions, but I hope it's okay. We're taking the few minutes to tell you these things. And the word civilian, I think it's in your in your report under um, uh, under the number one about creating press. And um, we, let's see, we recommend immediately creating CRESS program to be a civilian unarmed alternative. And the, the comment made, and I'll just use this little airtime to make this point, that the word civilian implies military, military civilian, and that the intentionality is to not just create CRESS, but to change the culture of the APD and that it, it, it isn't a military organization and it shouldn't be. And so change it, you know, just rewording that language of getting civilian out was important to one of our members. Um, so anyway, I don't know if you have any questions for us or if there's any other follow-up that you want to have with us alone or with, you know, off in any way, we're available to, to be supportive to you. Thank you, Marcy and Martha. Um, are there any members that have any questions? Mrs. Pat? I actually don't have a question, but I just want to thank both Mercy and Martha. I've known you, Mercy, for a long, long time, and your, beautiful, and your beautiful family. And I know you, you personally, and you know so many of the league members have been supportive of our work. So I just want to say nothing but you know, thank you very much. Uh, thank for you, Miss Pat. It it would be very nice if, and I I know that it's time constrained, if our league could at least make a statement of support. To Absolutely. See That's my hope. I'm one of the people that pushed to have Lee come uh, mm -hmm. and, and talk to us. Everything that both of you, you know, shared, you know, there are words of wisdom and uh, we, we appreciate, you know, your reflections and your advice. Thank you very much. Would, would you need that by Monday to, to be in the record by Monday for the meeting or is it something that could take a little longer? I mean, we're meeting on Monday. What do people think? I think by Monday, and it's kind of like too short a notice. It might not be possible because of our own internal Process. things, but yes. um, it might not be possible. But we'll we'll see what we can do. We do have a league spokesperson who you know, Adrian Trese, and maybe we can um, work with her to see what we can do for you in terms of a statement. I mean, I'm a member, but I'm not an active member. 
I wasn't an active member for over 10 years. All, all kinds of members are, ne are needed in the league. I uh, should be more active, right? <laughs> all action, you're active enough in this capacity. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, but Lake does a good work. They do a lot of good work. And, you know, for some of our young folks who may be thinking about running, Lake is a, is a, is a, uh, a wealth of resources where people can get, you know, how the political process works. So these are the people that make it happen. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Ms. Ferreira, did you have something you wanted to say? Thank you. Yeah, I did. I mean, obviously, I wanted to thank, um, you know, for the, the League of Women voters for all the work that they do and for, for them coming out tonight to uh, talk about some of what they did. And I think that's the thing that I wanted to say. I mean, obviously the questions were geared more towards the social services agencies because they're the ones that are the majority. But for, for you all, what I was interested in hearing, and I think you shared a lot of that information, is that what are you all doing in terms of focus on racial justice, right? Um, social justice kind of impacts. And also how are we in alignment with the work that you all are doing, right? So that to kind of, and I think you've said it, and obviously if you can formalize it even better, but to kind of like make sure that we're not duplicating things, but that we're being That's supported, like right? Um, and I think that was the importance of when we met with the, the reparations group last week was, okay, how can we be supportive? Because a lot of times what happens is that there's all these different groups doing work on racial justice. And then what we're doing is either we're, we're, we're doubling on things and, you know, and not really kind of, you know, we're wasting a lot of really minuscule resources, right? Because we don't right. have a lot of resources. So how can we kind of, you know, you know, all do this work in a way together so that then we can maximize uh, the resources and get more of the impact as opposed to, you know, doing the work in silos. Um, so for me, I think that's what I wanted to, to kind of hear if there's anything specific yeah. that obviously we could promote in terms of what the work that we're doing yeah. and how we can continue to kind of build together. I love that question. It's a great segue for me to give a pitch about this network. And um, the, the idea of it is, and okay, so it started with this event we had and we didn't invite you all to be a uh, panelist in the event because we made a decision that it would be the grassroots groups and not the town group. So Human Rights Commission and you all were not invited to that. You, you were invited to come, but not to be on the panel. But then for this network, we really are broadening it quite a lot. And the idea is to share resources, to share information, to share about events and to you know work together, but also just in that one night, that one event, 185 people came to that. And there was momentum, there was an interest and excitement. A lot of white people wanna know what's going on and how they can be supportive. And so there was this bigger vision kind of of, we could create like a, you know, a resident movement of interest and support and activism around racial just, justice issues in Amherst. And it, it would depend on what the different groups doing the racial justice work would want to have as a network. And the league's role would really be as conveners to be the container. So we could you know, help be the administrators and send out the emails and get the, the date and do the Zoom and all of that stuff. But that really the agendas and the, the, the focus and what's important would come from the groups themselves. And um, all the things that take time that nobody has the time to do, that's what we would take on, you know. So that that's what one of the things that we hope might come from the work of our uh, task force is to help this come to fruition, to have this kind of a network. Um, and we'll see. So far, I don't know if you all got the doodle poll the, uh, for it. Um, I did hear from Ms. Pat. Thank you so much. She responded right away. 
And it's, it's at this point, June 6 was the date that seemed like a good time for everybody from 2 to 4 p.m. But then we were thinking maybe we should wait until after all this budget stuff, after Juneteenth, after Race Amity Day, and you know just create a different time and do it like later in the summer. So we're open to, to seeing we're not trying to add one more burden on everybody that that's already real busy, but we do hope this could be something that could help just to in increase the momentum of the work. Thank you. Ms. Owen. Hi, Marcy and Martha. I want to thank you guys both for coming to the meeting and sharing this, sharing what you all do and coming on such short notice. I just wanted to confirm the date for that um, event. You said June 6th from 2 to 4? Well, that was our proposed date. Okay. And it may, if people want to, if people are available, it's a good date. You know, so far there were uh, like seven folks that weren't, there were 12 people who responded, seven, five of which were us, <laughs> our task force. And we don't really need to have a network within ourselves. But other than that, you know, if it, if it is a good day, go to the, I can resend the doodle poll email too, if that would be helpful. I'll, that would be I'll, I'll send it to, to you, uh, Ms. Owen, and, and then you can, you can pass it along with that work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> sure. And if none of these dates work, we can just go back to the drawing board and do it later in the summer, you know, because um, there's a lot going on between now and into June. Are there any questions, any other questions from the group? Okay, um, I also wanted to thank you, Marcy and Martha, for coming. Um, I think that it was very important to have you guys here uh, because we align and that we're fighting for similar goals here in Amherst and have a similar vision of making Amherst more equitable. Um, so thank you guys for sharing that information and the resources and documents that you have with us. And I look forward to reading your report on hiring practices. I think that would be very beneficial for even the, the implementation of the CREST program itself. Um, so thank you guys for your time and for your information today. Um, and if it's okay, I would like to invite the next group to um, come share with us. Sure. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, and Ms. Moisten, if Lev Ezra is available, I would like to double back. I believe that she is. She has her hand raised. There. Hi, Lev. Thank you for being here today. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and sorry for my uh, disruption earlier. Um, appreciate the chance to talk with you about um, the ways that this could interplay with the Amherst Survival Center. Um, so yes, I'm Lev Benezra and I'm here on behalf of the Amherst Survival Center. The Amherst Survival Center connects area residents with food, clothing, um, housewares, medical care, and community, um, all through the power of volunteer efforts. Um, and we certainly have a very strong focus within that on our food and nutrition programs, um, but we really offer much more um, outside of the pandemic in our full operational capacity. Um, I always describe the center as really first and foremost as a community center where we have lots of resources that people can access to help meet their basic needs. Um, and so when we, when you ask the question of what population do we serve, um, I would say everyone. Um, we serve people um, who, we serve people who eat and we serve people who wear clothes and we serve people who have medical needs and we serve people who are interested in engaging in community and talking with their neighbors. Um, and we certainly have a strong focus on providing resources that are helpful for folks who are living with low incomes and thus struggling to make ends meet um, by providing food, free clothing and housewares, free medical care, free access to other resources like SNAP enrollment or fuel assistance and those kinds of things um, to help make ends meet. 
Um, we also have an array of services uh, specifically for individuals who are experiencing homelessness. We have laundries and lockers and shower facilities and provide mail service, um, as well as, again, in our full operational mode, really serving as, as a place to be, a warming center in the winter, a cooling center in the summer, and a nice place in all the other seasons in between. Um, so yes, in terms of the specific services that we provide, we provide prepared meals, we provide groceries, both a full grocery shop for our food pantry, as well as daily access to produce and bread. Um, we provide free clothing and housewares in the community store. We provide free medical care in our clinic. Um, we have a resource center, um, as I was mentioning earlier, with uh, volunteers and staff from other organizations, helping people to link into other things, um, and then a plethora of volunteer opportunities for anyone who's interested and engaging in that capacity. Um, and the next question that you asked was, in what capacity do we work with the Amherst Police Department? Um, we do not have any current formal partnerships with APD. Um, we, our most frequent interaction with APD is um, in response, we have an alarm for our building. Um, and so occasionally when it goes off in the middle of the night or something like that, APD responds. Um, we also have times when uh, we set it off accidentally by you know, not closing the door correctly or those kinds of things and the APD responds. Um, and then we uh, call our other interactions with police. I would say it's more common if we have to call 911 for something that it's a medical emergency, um, in which case police often arrive with EMS. Um, and then it is very rare uh, that we would have an emergency, something where there is fear of imminent violence that we would contact APD to respond, you know, directly to that kind of an emergency. So, um, but that is how we have engaged with them. Um, is that what you meant by that question or is there something else you were looking for? I think that was a really good um, answer. I think we were just looking for any information you're willing and wanting to share and whatever that question means for you and your agency. And then okay. if there are any follow-up questions. That Great. So um, in response to the proposals um, that you shared, um, I definitely think that uh, the Amherst Survival Center, and I spoke to this uh, the other night, would benefit significantly. The Amherst Survival Center and the community that we serve would benefit significantly from a um, unarmed civilian community responder type team. Um, certainly we have situations in which, where it would be helpful for us as a staff to have backup and our additional support to respond, things like a mental health crisis or someone who is significantly intoxicated at a point at which they're violating our code of conduct and are making the space uncomfortable for other people and we need to address that or other things that arise, some other form of crisis where there is no violence um, taking place, but it would be very, very helpful for us to have an alternative to call. Um, I did want to um, mention specifically that I think from a, a usability standpoint, um, I would very much appreciate that coming through the same dispatch option of calling 911. Um, and I think that also because there are times where there are multiple layers to an emergency that's actually taking place, it's very helpful to have one dispatch that we could, one number that everybody, you know, five-year-olds know about 911, like that everybody knows and like that's the go-to for an emergency and to be able to have them then connect us appropriately based on the situation at hand. Um, so yes, yeah, so I definitely think that would be a significant um, benefit. And um, I think one of the ways that 
I would just add to that in terms of our broader mission are that we certainly see um, more significant um, policing clearly of BIPOC communities and also of lower income communities. Um, and we're working with a population that uh, is compared to our immersed population at large is disproportionately many more of our BIPOC community members. Um, also, we work with many folks who are currently undocumented. We work with people who are um, currently homeless, et cetera, and have other, um, other reasons why there is additional fear of the police. And so being able to, um, or additional, you know, ne other negative experiences there and risks in engaging the police. And so it'd be helpful to have uh, that alternate response. Um, I did want to, um, in reference to the other, um, the other components that you talked about, um, I would just encourage, obviously I'm, uh, I'm not aware of the depths to which you've engaged with other organizations throughout this process. So I won't purport to make any assumptions there, um, but to whatever extent it hasn't yet, I would certainly encourage coordinations with, coordination with existing organizations around some of the resources that you're hoping will be provided via the youth center or um, the, uh, or the cultural center, such as, for example, Family Outreach of Amherst or Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Um, there are community action youth programs as another is part of community action that um, serves young people. Bridge Family Resource Center is another organization. And so there may be um, there may be opportunities to collaborate or connect there, um, or there may be reasons to go in a different direction, but um, would just pose that. And I would certainly, we also have, you know, LSSE or the school or, you know, other entities that are providing programming. And I don't know if there are appropriate collaborations there. I would also indicate that um, when we are, when the Amherst Survival Center is again, able to operate in a community center capacity um, that we would be very interested in um, exploring additional opportunities for connection there. We have a beautiful space and have lots of delicious food and have lots of people who, you know, come and are comfortable there. And we would love to continue to expand that and have it be more accessible and more um, welcoming and um, just a, a space that could be uh, a space that is what the community needs it to be. Um, so I'm certainly interested in talking about that. Um, and then the last piece that I just did want to mention and doesn't directly fit into these proposals and to these items, but in terms of just other issues that are kind of getting addressed as the town overall is uh, and many different organizations are working on racial justice and supporting the anti-racism focus is really thinking about ways that as a town, we can uh, support employees who are coming to this community to work, um, BIPOC commu uh, um, community members who are coming to this community to work and supporting employers because um, certainly, especially for folks who are coming from other communities and other towns where they live, um, having Amherst feel like a welcoming place and one where they are safe is a really core need in order for employers to successfully recruit and retain um, the best available talent of uh, people of all different backgrounds. Um, Yes, I think, um, as Marcy sort of mentioned, I think I've, um, you know, not, wasn't a hundred percent sure sort of what format to be presenting, and so I hope what I shared was useful. But I'm certainly happy to answer any other uh, additional questions that would be helpful to the group. Thank you, Lev. Are there any questions um, from the group, Mrs. Pat? So mine is actually not a question. First of all, how is your child? Oh, is he okay? I apologize. Did you repeat yourself? Did we lose you? We lost uh, you. Can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. That's okay. 
Um, how is your child? Thank you so much. Uh, he is uh, being taken care of by his other parent um, at the at the ER, but I think is doing oh. all right. Oh my God. Okay. Hope he feels better. Um, first of all, I want to also thank you for your support, for your strong support of CSWG on Monday and advocacy. Um, your testimony was extremely powerful. Uh, you know, we're very grateful. Thank you. And for the work you do at Survival Center, it's such a great resource for the community. And um, I know for some folks that we that my um, program serve, you know, benefit from you for, for what you guys do. So just want to thank you for your mm. service and your leadership and for coming out tonight to present to us. Thank you for your advice. And that's all I want to say. I'm very familiar with uh, what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Are there any other questions? Okay, um, thank you, Lev, for coming and sharing with us today. I also just wanted to thank you for your support at Monday night's town council meeting. I also heard your public comment and was very moved um, and feeling very proud that there was that much support and that we are speaking to all of the peoples in the town that we are looking to reach. Um, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us today. Um, and if it's okay, I'm going to look to bring in the next group now. <clears throat> um, Bridget Hines and Anastasia Morton from Upward Bound. I think they may be in the audience. Hi there, good, good afternoon. Um, my name is Bridget Hines. I'm the director of the Upward Bound program. And I'm here with um, the program's assistant director, Anastasia Morton. I can just say as an Amherst resident, I am so, um, I'm just filled with gratitude for the work you're doing and really so um, happy to see the way the report came out, the diligence and, um, materials that you presented there, the way that you broke down the 10 years of police experiences and all those different pieces, like just so, so impressive. I'm really, um, I'm really, really so happy that you folks are doing this work. Um, I think that you probably invited us tonight because um, we don't, we don't serve youth in Amherst usually, although we have had a couple region-wide programs where um, 30, 40 youth from Amherst have shown up for one of our Saturday programs and really said like, you need to have this program in Amherst as well. Um, but, um, but we served um, 60 to 65 students a year, primarily, sorry about that, low income and first generation students um, from Springfield, Mass in a, um, year-round wraparound program. All of our participants are, um, are um, low-income or first-generation. 96% um, are both low-income and first-generation students. Um, and um, our program's mission really is to create a strengths-based, culturally proficient college-going community for these young people. We want to provide the um, youth in our program who are all high school students with the resources they need to get into and then to succeed in college. And um, to do that, we're both in the schools during the school day and in the community after school. We provide advising, mentorship, afternoon, um, after school tutoring and the hardest subjects in AP and whatnot, all the way down to ninth, ninth grade English. And um, we also order, offer Saturday sessions for academic and personal growth for students, um, exposure to enrichment um, activities. A couple of weeks ago, we had a um, 
online program with UMass Fine Arts Center where all the students were sent posters and then they did a close read analysis of the posters and the artwork and then created their own art. That's just one example of many of the weekend college-like experiences we provide to students, but we also um, really focus on personal development for our students, helping them find the pieces to, um, to be their authentic selves in the world and develop in the way that they want to develop um, and then try and connect them to whatever resources we can so that they can be their fullest selves. Um, I think that we just do have that experience um, in the summer when we have a six week residential program where our students from Springfield come up here and live on campus. We have the experience of them being Amherst residents for that six weeks. And that comes with all the um, highs and lows that, um, that being here and living in Amherst bring, especially for young people of color. So um, at this point, I think Stage is gonna talk a little bit about our experience with the police and with the community and some ideas we had about the program. But um, just again, I wanted to thank you all for all the work you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So thank you so much for having us here today, everyone in the room. And I'm very, very happy to be here because it's like um, twofold of being a member of a community partner, but then also being able to speak as a community member. So I think um, with the question of in what capacity do we work with the Amherst Police Department, it's kind of twofold because when the students come from Springfield, they have the experience of being an outsider to the Amherst community, and especially because it's during that summertime. So I think that when the students are on campus, they kind of get that, um, the profiling that comes in being in large groups on a campus that can come from campus police. And I think even as a community member, I've seen a lot of the young men in the community get profiled by campus police, but less from the Amherst Police Department because they are known for being in the community. But when we have the students come from Springfield and they're not known in the community, then a lot of times they can be profiled and this can happen at the pool when we're there in large groups or if we bring students to um, town to walk around because these are our down periods. So then really having to deal with that summertime profiling. So I think when it comes down to really in what capacity that we've had this opportunity to engage with them, it's really in um, this dynamic of campus police versus Amherst police. And I think that's um, very interesting because even as I was sitting and listening, I was just thinking more of like those times of like not really, um, well, I wrote that in my paper. Um, it's this line of the difference of policing, which is like college policing, which sees a lot of bad behavior and doesn't really get checked by Amherst police. But when you're on college campuses, young people of color, are really campused heavily by campus police, if that makes sense. So I just like get to see the two of those things by being a community member and someone who works on the college campuses. So I think that's a lot of how um, when you work with them. So if I was to say what changes I would like to see provided by the town, I loved how in um, the mission, you spoke about really having something that's a mental health outreach. And I loved how um, Brianna said it, previously that it's like a crisis intervention that's non-violent um, in nature. So really what is something that's kind of not the police, not EMT, but also can come for when it's those times where somebody's been drinking too much, if it's um, something that's non-threatening, but really does need somebody just to intervene because it is a crisis, but also that really speaks to outside of this college partying atmosphere, because I've noticed a lot of college partying atmospheres get police intervention, but it's not the intervention that other people would get when they necessarily need that intervention as well, because it's more looked at as crisis intervention, less as policing. So I don't know if there was something that I was thinking as like, um, with all these colleges around here, why isn't it a track that can kind of lead towards that? That's something that I would love to see like a line or funding to go to because even with us, we um, work a lot with internships. So we have professors that we can have students to work hours with them and be able to learn their field. Why wouldn't it be something that 
could have students do internships. That's like, I mean, I feel like there's a middle between ROTC, which we really don't have in Amherst, but even if it's not ROTC, maybe it could be something that has that kind of disciplinary to say, this is how you would intervene into a situation that has crisis on different levels, but it still has that discipline that you might get from police academy, but you can also kind of have that within these different schools of the high school, um, Amherst College, UMass, I mean, this is a five college community, and then that can be another way to have an alternative to policing. Um, and then I said, what um, issues? and Amherst do you believe are not addressed. So I really kind of feel like this divide of, um, so we're looked at as a college town. And I think even as just being upward bound part of Amherst College, the students really get to use access of the campus during the summer. But during the summer, the college students are gone. And that's really when you get to see the community come out. But during the school year, when the college is here, I think what happens with policing for, um, let's say the community, and I'll say even a young men of color in the community, and even for those who have to be bystanders to it, is that we see a lot of our teenage young men interacting in the college crowd, and they stand out, and they are policed heavily. And the young men of color are watching the college students kind of get away with murder, and they don't understand why they're not able to have the same rules and regulations. So I don't know if that's something that could be addressed but just noticing that that like happens, I see that all the time with the students and really just having to have that conversation with them about yes, and it's different rules at play, but I don't know how else to say that. I feel like everybody gets it though. Okay. And with the population you serve benefit from. So I feel like yes, the population that we serve would benefit from it. But again, like I said, because they're on campus with us during the summertime, we do have access to crisis intervention and we actually use it a lot. Like we wouldn't have a time where policing would really intervene. If it does, we're able to squash that and say, no, that's not really what we need. We're able to really access those resources. That's why I feel like with the college, it's available. And because we work on a college, we use it to the most of our ability. But once you like really are in the community of this college town, for some reason, we act like it's not, I mean, well, it, it isn't available, but we know the resource is like literally up the block at UMass. They got a whole health center that's about it. So we could have something like that too, because they disperse people for that. So that would be something I would bring up on the 24th, like the access is right there. Why can't we just kind of model something like that? And then I think that was really it. And oh, I agreed with um, what Deborah was saying before. I don't think that y'all should rush it. I think that yes, people wanna know and they wanna get it on paper, but once it's on paper, they will hold you to it. And that's like a contract. You should leave it open for being able to change it later on because we're in pandemic mode now and we have no idea what post pandemic mode is going to give us. And it's gonna have a lot more mental health things that are going to come out and play. So you really wanna have a way to say, well, let's add this on, or let's add this on, or let's add this on, or let's add that on. So really leaving that open, but then saying like what um, Russ was saying, let's look at how they get the money and how they open up hours and stuff and give a structure. But I would go slow and not rush it. And I yield the floor. Thank you again for having us here. Thank you. I would just say one more thing that as I was looking at the proposal that you have for the youth center, I think that's going to be really important. But there's some really specific things to Amherst that we don't think a lot about. Our graduation rate isn't great. And it's especially Amherst High's graduation rate really goes down when you take out the white young people who are graduating like at 93%. When you go to high needs, you're getting graduation rates that are you know, around 79% for Latin X young people, you're in the low 80s, that type of thing. And then after that, another thing that was really interesting to me is how many young people from the high school are going on to community college, like 25%. I just say that's another group of youth who could use supports because they're still remaining here in town. That's a really high number for Western Mass. Most other schools we're seeing like around 13, 14% heading to community college. That might be a good thing. It might be that more of our youth who are graduating 
are going on to do something, but it also, community college is just a time, um, the community colleges have really low graduation rates and it's a time where if our youth, so many of them are going there, they could use extra support. And um, the TRIO programs or the Upward Bound programs, um, I think they provide a good model for that type of work that you could do at a youth center, hopefully with even more fun activities than we get in because we do have a little bit of a strong academic focus. Thank you all. Um, I would like to move into questions, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Owen. So um, I just want to obviously thank uh, Bridget and Stasia. Hello. <laughs> um, you all are doing fabulous work. Upper Bound has been doing some fabulous work for, for the last couple of years um, that, you know, since it's been reestablished, obviously. And that was one of the reasons we wanted to invite Upper Bound because we know it had been here years ago and had done fabulous work and now back to doing it. And, um, and exactly what you all were talking about, I think those were the things that we, at least for me, I wanted to hear is how is it, you know, that, you know, when you all bring the young people, you know, into Amherst, you know, people who are in the BIPOC community, you know, how are they police? How are they profile? How, how, how is the interaction with, with, with the police, you know, because of, of those certain aspects. And then like you all talked about in terms of the youth um, center, you know, how could that be, you know, more of a partnership, right? We get that youth center in here. How could that be more of a partnership with the upper bound program to be able to kind of utilize um, some of those resources to be able to kind of really magnify um, a lot of what the young people bring to our community, right? All the wonderful things that the young people bring. But, you know, how, you know, for me, that's the thing, you know, how can we kind of be in connection in terms of what we propose and, and the upper bound program? Because, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of things that need to be improved. Uh, but thank you all. And, you know, I'm, I'm you all like biggest cheerleader. So. Mm, thank you. And I love how you bring up the youth sense of because it's a great way for mentorship and apprenticeship to go hand in hand. And a lot of the students that we work with in Springfield, they get a chance to come up here and work in like the Boys and Girls Club, um, even like going to like the schools and that helps them think about wanting to go into teaching, doing more youth leadership work. And then it also helps the students really get to learn from their story and see that they can do the same things. And then it helps that first generation to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. And I would just say, Deb, we have experiences even where parents drive their students up to visit with us and on the way here for drop off, the parent realizes, oh, this is not a good idea because they're pulled over or have a police interaction um, and take their kids back home that they don't feel safe to put them way out here without their own protection at times. And, um, and we've lost a couple of really precious students that way, at least during the summer. When we get them back in the school year, obviously we hold them close, but um, but the other thing I was gonna say is, I think that there's a grant opportunity to write for a program like Upward Bound, but Western Mass wide. And if there's folks on this committee that are interested in doing that, it's a project I'm really interested in. Can I just say something before we get to the next question? I would feel bad if I didn't say this. I really wanna like restate again, this division of like campus police on our community and I'm gonna say young teens, boys of color and this thing about like um, Amherst police. I feel like a lot of the Amherst police are like their um, basketball coaches. They post them in football, they're their track coaches. So they know the young men. But then you have some police that work on campuses and they don't know these young men. And when they see them step foot on campus, they are on them. And that's not fair for a lot of these young boys to have to have that type of police in because these are young boys who are like doing something positive on their free time. They're hanging out with their friends, not doing nothing. And every, every single day they step on a college campus that's in their community, you got three and four police cars rolling up on you. That's a situation. Or, or like they're walking like three, why do three young people of color, if they walking together, gotta have campus police roll up on them? That's a situation. But then it's like the cop is your, your basketball coach. So it's like, you kind of like not knowing like what the situation is. And this 
the colleges are in their community because we live here 24 seven. So I really don't wanna like let that go underway. Like it's very difficult. Like if when the college students leave, like they leave, but we still in this community. So how come we can't walk on the campuses without being policed heavily? But sorry, I'm gonna stop. Thank you, Anastasia. Um, Ms. Owen, did you still have a comment? Yeah, um, Bridget and Anastasia, I just wanted to thank you both for making the time to join us for the meeting tonight and also to share the experience of the, the experiences of the students that you're working with. Um, one of the things that came up when we met with the APD was um, their community outreach to meet with fraternities and sororities. And for me, one of the biggest gaps was like a lack of effort in them trying to work with programs where there were BIPOC students. So my question for you all is as we continue to, the second part of our charge is on um, re reforms for the oversight structure of the police. I'm wondering if you would find some sort of, not partnership, but some sort of way to introduce students to the APD helpful or not. I just wanted to throw that out there. Because I, I do agree. And I think that it, the APD has a reputation for profiling people. And I can only imagine what that feels like when you're in a new space and college, being on a college campus in general when you're first gen is very in, intimidating. I would just say we've been part, the UMass Police Department works together with Amherst Police Department in the summer to provide a summer ropes course. Mm -hmm. And we did that ropes course twice and had a great experience. And the third time that we went, the group leader, um, our students really felt not welcomed and really dealt with harshly. And so we haven't gone back to do that, but I think it was, a, a, you know, a matter of personnel and also, um, you know, maybe it was, it was looking like it was going to thunder, the officer was rushing people through things, that type of thing. But um, so we've had sort of mixed experiences like that. Our students have been in town having bubble tea and met, um, you know, the police dog and those types of things. There are some positive interactions, but I feel like it needs to go a lot deeper than that. I'd love to see some youth, some youth on the advisory board and some youth connections, and then the youth actually coming up with ideas for like deeper things, whether it's dialogue or um, co-created events or things like that, so that. Um, so that it's a real connection, not just a, you know, once in a while, like PR type of connection, if you know what I mean. I would always love to engage the youth and the officers in authentic dialogue. I think that's necessary for really breaking down um, positive and negative ideas on both ends, because I think the police hold stereotypes about the youth and the youth hold stereotypes about the police. So how do we get both sides in the room and be able to like hear them out loud and then also like bring you know myth and factuality together so how do you really just dedicate time to that i would always love to help with that please let me know if there's any way that i could help with that but i also have to be honest with you i feel like the police are very nervous to engage in that process they feel that and i know me and bridget was talking about this earlier that impact and intention they may not intend for things to like land in a certain way, but their impact still has that effect on the student. But then also it's like for the students to know they may not intend to come off in a certain way, but they may impact the officers in that way. So really, again, how do you have time just set aside for really like going through that whole process? And I think that's worth it. I feel like, again, I know I would say I'm definitely would love to give time and energy towards that. But then also too, I don't know if the police would be willing to do that because if they are, you got a bunch of young people in the community that would love to help with that. I know that for a fact. I see you smiling. You like, yeah, my child, be ready to. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moiston. Um, so I am an Upward Bound alum from Amherst, and I just have to say that to this day, I still remember the instructions how to take my notes because it was like drilled in from a teacher who we all thought was really cool. And so, of course, we always did, you know, what he said at the time. But I have to say at the same time, it definitely in the summertime, it's really hard because the kids don't have once you hit like 14, 15, you're too young for summer camp and then you know maybe you can't quite get go to a job yet and so I found that Upward Bound really was able to um 
a lot of the young black um, kids that I grew up with, we all went to Upward Bound together and it just kept us out of a lot of trouble at the same time or just having bad interactions, whichever you want to, however you want to word it. And so I just, I hope that someday that we can bridge that gap, that bridge again. And so we can install the Amherst um, Upward Bound program again. And I would love to help with that if there's something that needs to be done. And so thank you both. Thank you, Jennifer. It's so great to have Upward Bound family in the room. I know there's more than one here. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Um, it's always good to like really think about the benefits of good mentorship, because I think that's another thing we talk to the students about is that we at Upward Bound, it's like we try to really make sure we hold the space where we can make sure everybody receives good mentorship, but we know when you leave, not everybody's really trying to mentor you in the right way to go down the right path. So it's like, really, can we find more spaces and opportunity where students can get access to that? Thank you, Anastasia. Are there any other um, comments or questions from the group? <clears throat> Okay, thank you, um, Bridget and Anastasia. Thank you so much for taking the time out today to come meet with us. Your information was very helpful um, and I'm definitely gonna keep it in the front of my mind when thinking about the Multicultural Center and the Youth Center. Um, thank you guys so much for your time. And I think we have one other group um, in the audience looking to share with us today. Um, do we have a representative from the Human Rights Commission? If you are in the audience, can you please raise your hand? You have the bulk of the Human Rights Commission here. So if you can just okay. give me one moment, I will pull them in. Awesome, thank you. Did we lose Ben? Okay, and do we have all the members in? We have all the me members that are here that are present at the meeting at this point time. Okay, um, I would like to welcome you all here today and thank you for your time and you can go ahead and take the floor. So, yeah, so the, the chair has left. He must have had to leave. Um, and so I don't know if one of uh, Matthew or uh, Erica or Deb, if you would, and Sid's not here either, if one of you would like to speak or all three of you have, you know, a, a little bit to say or not. Yep. So I, you know, there's there's a lot for us to, to share, obviously, um, over the course of a number of years, we, uh, we back in 1999 were set up to deal with, with uh, complaints about uh, discrimination and uh, over the years have talked with and, and worked with the police department. Um, I've got a couple of things that, um, that I will mention have been ongoing problems for us um, that, that perhaps you guys could think about. Uh, one is that we have not historically had the ability to, uh, to render a decision. We have mediated with anyone who has wanted to come in. Because our, our meetings have been open under our open meeting law, when people have come in with a complaint, uh, we had a human rights director for a number of years who would receive that complaint um, and could investigate it, but would have, to, um, would have to determine whether an investigation was necessary. Um, and in doing so, would then uh, determine whether they could mediate the problem or would bring it to the Human Rights Commission for mediation. That has not really been the role of the Human Rights Commission um, for two reasons. Um, one is that the, um, we have shifted the role of Human Rights Director uh, back in the uh, 2000s, uh, late 2000s before 2010, there was a human rights direct, uh, human rights director that I think lost the faith of the town, and so funding uh, was cut. And we and and also purportedly there were 
not that many complaints. And so with those uh, two things, the funding was cut so that there was a human resources director with human, uh, human rights director responsibilities as well. So one of the concerns I would have, um, particularly with uh, the, the resources um, angle that you guys have done such a great job of pulling together uh, what the needs would actually be uh, for the press program and for some of the other programming. Um, it, it's not clear entirely how long, if, if the CSWG does not stick together, and if there isn't a process of figuring out who's gonna stay in those roles over years, um, then there's a question of who's gonna remember why you set things up the way you set things up. Um, who's gonna have the pull in the town to be able to retain funding uh, for the work that you want to do? And, um, and who's gonna have the, the respect of future town counselors uh, when this becomes more of, a, um, of an issue that was big back, remember 2020 and 2021? Oh, that's when everyone cared about this issue. And now it's 2026 and you know, there's a funding question. So there's, there's a lot of things to think about. There's also some language in there about uh, being able to issue subpoenas. Um, you know, again, usually that's gonna have to be done through a court. Uh, I, I, I certainly uh, yield any understanding on that to, to Deborah. Um, and, and, uh, but, but my understanding would be that usually you'd have to um, have to have a court um, say that someone is not cooperating and that because of that, they're in violation of, um, of an order from the court uh, under penalty to, to either appear or to, to give documents. And if they don't do that, then they're going to be arrested and put in jail, um, which is an interesting thing to do where the person who may not be cooperating with you is your local police department. So just, just some things to think about there. Um, I, I had a, a bunch of other things, but I want other people to have a chance to speak as well. Thank you, Ms. Hagan. So um, hello, everybody. Um, I just had a couple of concerns, not necessarily from the Human Rights Commission point of view, but I was listening to the conversation earlier and I am quite concerned that you all have a charge that you have to meet by Monday. And I think it's a very important charge and I don't want you to rush through it and miss something. So I know that, you know, Deborah and Russ were talking but Deborah has to work and Russ had to go. And so I'm just a little concerned about that aspect of, um, you know, getting the wording correct and not rushing so that you miss something. So I just wanted to say that I appreciate all the work that you all are doing. Um, I feel a, a lot of pressure myself right now as um, uh, almost retiree of the school to, um, to continue to advocate for my black and brown sons and daughters. And I call them sons and daughters because I truly believe they're family. Um, Alicia's always, you know, Jennifer, I've had Jennifer, Alicia, I've, let me go down the list and see how many kids, that are, somebody, how many adults right now I actually have taught or, while I've been at that school. And so um, I just, I'm concerned that whatever the charges that the town council wants you to do by Monday gets done right and in order without so much pressure. Cause I, I'm feeling the pressure right now from you all to get it right. And I just wanna make sure that, that it, nothing gets missed. Um, as far as the Human Rights Commission, I feel like we are pulled in all kinds of directions in order to try to support uh, so many different entities. And it's something that I cherish, but it's also something that I'm like, ah, oh, one more thing. But um, I joined the commission in order to be able to do that one more thing. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. I'm glad to see young people like Darius here. I'm um, a little, so Petua couldn't be here today. And to have such a young person be the vice chair of our Human Rights Commission. I don't know if you know that, but we have a high school senior who's our vice chair. 
And um, I think that that's important because we always have a young voice. I've, I heard somebody say that we need the young people's voice. We need um, students here and, I, and nobody responded, but I wanted Darius to say, wait a minute, that's me, that I'm the voice of the young people. So Darius, speak up. <laughs> Don't let anybody silence you. Let them know that you're here and you're listening and you're taking it all in and you're speaking for your peers. That's all I wanted to say right now. And I hope I didn't overstep any of my bounds, but I really do have a concern um, that we have a very important charge. You all have a very important charge and I don't want you to rush and miss something. So I also think that that was Ms. Ononi Baku's concern as well, as I heard her speaking. So that's it. Um, I'm here if you need me for anything else. Thank you, Mrs. Haygood. Um, Ms. Neubauer? Um, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for having, for inviting the Human Rights Commission to be with you guys tonight. It is wonderful to sit in on your meeting. Um, I also want to say, um, I just want to commend you for the incredible work that you have done this year. The report was stunning. I mean, I was just completely blown away when I read it. And um, it was clearly the result of incredible hard work and dedication and a willingness to sit with pain and translate that pain into concrete action. So, um, and requests for proposals. So I just, I, I just have so much respect for the work that you guys have done. And I thank you, you know, on behalf of, of our community. Um, I am not speaking as a human rights commissioner tonight, but I, um, although I sit on the human rights commission, I do have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you and not necessarily to you know, stimulate any dialogue on these questions tonight, but as I was listening in the beginning, these questions were running through my head. Um, let me just pull them up. Um, so the first question I had was, um, if the CRESS program will be an alternate re an alternative responder model for um, so police are not no longer responding to mental health, substance use, um, or homelessness issues in the town. Um, what is the sort of complementary vision for, and, and maybe this is in the report and I just am not remembering it. Um, what is the complementary vision for reducing community policing? Because once you take these three issues off, off of the hands of police officers, they will have more time. And I'm concerned that they will use that time to increase patrols on communities, on the neighborhoods that are primarily BIPOC neighborhoods. Um, I'm also concerned um, about racially biased traffic stops. And um, I also don't remember reading how you are proposing that gets dealt with um, where unquestionably BIPOC residents are more vulnerable than white residents. And um, if CRESS is specifically sort of focusing in more on an alternative responder model for those three areas, how will the traffic stops, you know, get addressed? And then the other suggestion I had, because I work in mental health, um, if CRESS workers are employees of the town, and not of a mental health agency, I think you don't, I would recommend not overlooking an extra item in the budget for supervision of those workers because a lot comes up when you work with these populations. It's very emotionally taxing work and they need a, a place and someone who's more senior than them um, with more experience to be able to process the experiences that they're having to stay safe in the job that they're doing. So I just don't want that to get overlooked. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charity. So I just wanted to add one more thing, which is just um, our, our work with uh, the 
Amherst Police Department over the years, in addition to talking with them, having the police chief come in and talk with us about um, what kind of training, we've also tried to um, talk with him about things that would be both preventative and responsive to problems that we've seen. Um, preventative, uh, so we had a commissioner who raised the concern about officers who are um, perhaps funded by some other kind of, of association might get funding to go do military style training and policing um, and get flown out somewhere, Arizona, Las Vegas, I don't know where it, where it is, but, um, and, you know, so I, I had a conversation with the police chief about that and he said, look, I can't control what they do when they're not, um, when they're not on my dime, when they're not um, working for the town. So if they take vacation days and they go do that, I can't stop them from doing that. But that's the kind of concern that we have with regard to um, if you hire someone who thinks that that the, the response that they need to have um, to a concern in the town is a, a military style response, that's not good. Um, but that's a limit on what, what the police chief can do uh, with regard to other people's free time. Um, the other thing is that when we have uh, talked with him. Usually the chair of the, the commission has uh, an opportunity to help mediate some of the, the problems that have come up, but the police chief has been very uh, responsive in saying, I, I'm gonna talk to my officer about this. I understand this issue now. Uh, usually we have not had a direct relationship with the officer who has been complained about. Uh, we hear from the, the person who has made a complaint and we talk to the police chief who tries to present the perspective of the officer. Um, I, there are sometimes concerns that the town has, and I'm not sure if this is union contract based, uh, in having an officer show up um, for these types of discussions, um, or for having any employee of the town show up in a situation where they might get sued. Uh, one of the reasons that the Human Rights Commission hasn't been the best body before dealing with something that could lead to a lawsuit uh, is that uh, in order to sue for some types of discrimination, you have to have filed a complaint with the Massachusetts Commission uh, Against Discrimination. Um, and so if we are a step in talking with people that slows them down from taking that step, which would allow them to sue if that's what they eventually need to do, um, then we're actually a bit of an impediment to their getting the remedy that they might be looking for. Um, that said, um, you know, the, the fact that most situations are dealt with with people being able to speak to someone and uh, have their concern heard, um, you know, is, is something that obviously whatever kind of review commission is there would, would be able to engage in as well. And I think creating more of a sense of inclusion, which is what I think um, the other components, not necessarily the CREST component, although I think it is more inclusive to have someone come up who clearly cares about you as opposed to someone who might very much care about you, but they have you know, a gun or a nightstick with them when they're coming up to express their caring. Um, I don't know if anyone has ever come up to give you a hug while having a, like a weapon out, that doesn't feel so good. Um, and so I think having, uh, the, the whole program uh, focusing more on inclusion and on caring uh, for our community is, uh, is a very good approach. And I'm, I'm glad that, and, and support the move in that direction. So thank you very much for all the work you've done. I will tell you that, um, you know, as, as someone who um, was able to sit on the commission, uh, on, the, on the group that uh, met with most of you to, to help select you, um, I, you know, I, uh, I, I could not have imagined that you would have done such work and pulled it together so quickly. Um, I did think that the town council had posed an impossible ask of you and uh, you've gone above and beyond. And I just want to tell you, I'm so impressed and so proud of the work that you're doing for our town. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Charity. Um, at this time, I want to open the floor to any questions from the group. Mrs. Pat? Well, first of all, I want to thank um, three of you for um, speaking with 
to us tonight and for your patience, you know, waiting for a long time. I thank you for what you do at Human Rights Act Commission is actually the, used to be the only a body that has a lot of uh, BIPOC folks. The only thing about um, your commission that I would really like to see change is why does it have to be an open meeting? Because it will help people to come more forward uh, to report um, complaints about uh, discrimination and injustices. And um, I think it's something that, you know, people should be talking about so that you guys can be more effective. I think I would like to see Human Rights Commission to be able to actually implement accountability when they investigate. Um, I would like you guys to have more power because you know, the role you guys play in this time is very important, but you guys need to be given more power to do it. And so that's my frustration in a, in a body that have a lot of uh, people of color. And I know you guys are doing a lot that I would like to see the town like give you guys more power or whatever the process it takes to do that. And perhaps we can, I can see how CSWG can like push and advocate for something like that in our final report. Um, to Ms. Hegard, uh, Hegard um, thank you. Thank you for your service in the school system. Um, I'm from Nigeria, as most people know, it takes a village and all my kids are your kids and we'll be friends for a long time. God bless you, thank you. Um, I know the school system will miss you, um, but uh, you deserve to, to retire, but you're still in the community. Thank you so much for everything you you've done from you know, school and after school and bail trips and you, know, you, really, you really helped shape a lot of kids' lives, including mine. Um, so I wanna thank everybody for what you all are doing. About Deborah, I'm also in mental health field and I know that we don't take the press program very lightly. Absolutely, lots of super supervision for frontline workers you know, has to happen in order to sustain the program because I can see potential for high burnout. So we thought this through very well when we planned the program to make sure that there is sufficient uh, supervision. So we'll see how, you know, the town officials will take this. There is money to pay for this program from free cash to mar marijuana funding to reserve from APD uh, money, there's money to do the, all the programs that we suggested. The issue is, is there will, is there priority that this should happen in this town? So, but anyway, thank you all for coming out. Thank you, Mrs. Pat. Are there any other questions? <laughs> Ms. Ferreira? Um, I might have missed this because as you all know, we're on Zoom and, you know, my kids came in and you have to kind of, you know, <laughs> um, talk with them and, and deal with some home stuff right now with this whole Zoom world. But um, the question that I was interested more so in, and I don't know if that's something that could be provided at some point to us, because I, I, when I was uh, talking to other community members, they had have also mentioned it, is like, you know, since the police department is funded by you know the town um when the police are sued let's say you know because of discrimination because of uh, other complaints and things like that isn't that drawing upon um town funding isn't that um kind of pulling away from from you know other resources that that money could go towards so i'm not sure if like the human rights commission would have information in terms of that or how is it that maybe we could find that type of information isn't that insurance i think that's what you have insurance for for lawsuits mm -hmm. i speak as an employer yeah but but, but remember that the more complaints you have the higher the insurance then you got Absolutely. to pay so that's still resources right yeah. so I, that, my thing is just because that could go also towards why it is that we need to kind of fund other programs like what we re recommended, right? <laughs> That's going to avoid those types of lawsuits and complaints if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point though. Yeah, bed insurance, yeah. Well, I, I don't know that any of us can speak to the um, 
any agreements that have been reached or, or any suits that have actually gone forward. Um, I, I know that there have been, there are conversations and um, obviously if you can remedy the concern and if you can fix it, um, that, that is better than having something that's an ongoing concern that you can settle this one and then you have to respond the next time the same officer is doing the same thing. Um, so, but uh, I, I can't speak at all to uh, the financing of, of that type of thing. Um, and, uh, and Jennifer, I guess if, if you could speak to it, you probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, again, if, if that's something that, um, if you could get a, a request to the town council for Oh, you're frozen. Did he just freeze? Yeah. yeah. Am I frozen for everybody now? Or? Oh, now oh, you're, you're frozen now. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. You know, Zoom. Um, but yeah, I, I was saying that if you, uh, you could certainly say that if you are going to do an analysis that is all of the costs of, that, if you're going to try to provide all. Oh, he's frozen again. Maybe he can shut off the video, it might help him. Oh, good thinking. All right, oh, can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, um, so by the way, this doesn't normally work for me to shut off the video, but uh, I was just saying that you can ask for, um, if, if there's a challenge to how much funding uh, it Now we can't see when he freezes. Well, it could also be something that he can um, send to us. He can email. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we'll, we'll talk another time. We'll talk another yeah, time. Yeah, or just send it to us by email, uh, Matthew. But I wanted to also obviously thank all of you for all your dedication and our work too. We always We all have to do all of this in collaboration. I do have a question for you guys. So can somebody walk me through, says the APD officer pull somebody over and they want to file a complaint. Do they come to you guys first or, or do they go to the, to the chief? Usually they go to the chief um, if they do not feel that the chief has responded appropriately um, or if they're uncomfortable going to the chief, historically they were able to go to the human rights director and then the human rights director uh, would be able to take information and see uh, what the next steps should be. Uh, usually that would be a mediation if they felt that the police chief wasn't getting uh, what the concern was. And so what about you guys, the Human Rights Commission, what do you guys do? I so that, that would be when the chair of the commission would be invited in by the human rights director uh, to help, help mediate the, and, and that's where our educational component and mediation component fits together uh, because we're able to explain, you know, um, when uh, Chief Livingstone wanted to have more officers um, in housing complexes uh, in order to have a better relationship, he needed, I think, some education on what over policing feels like for those of us who, you know, I'm from Crown Heights, Brooklyn originally. Um, so, for, I, I have an understanding of what over policing means and the likelihood of an arrest and the likelihood of a bad situation with police officers that he may not have. And so it's helpful for him to get that, that understanding. And the chair of the Human Rights Commission usually has a, does a component of that. I mean, I, I know the process. I would just, what I'm trying to get at is, so the Human Rights Commission couldn't, for example, recommend you know, discipline an officer, like, um, okay, so so that's what we need to fight, you know, advocate for, fight for, to have Human Rights Commission have authority to actually do its work. You know, that's you know one of the things I'm hoping, you know, CSW, and I can't speak for everybody because we we still have another report that is due next month. So we're hope, you know, I'm hoping I will be able to like, you know, bring that up, but I can't speak for everybody tonight. Thank you. I think, um, Ms. Pat, if I can say, I think your suggestion to advocate for, and I don't even know if within Mass General Law, if this is a possibility that 
the Human Rights Commission would meet in a closed door, it would not be an open meeting. That is a fabulous suggestion because like having sat on the Human Rights Commission for a couple of years now, I was really blown away by the amount of testimony that you were, that CSWG was able to receive because we have received precious little. And I think it's because people really just don't feel comfortable coming forward in a public manner because our meetings are open. And um, so I think that that would allow us to do the work of an actual human rights commission in a much more effective manner. It's a great suggestion. And it has nothing to do with you guys at all. It's not the people on it. It's how the system, you know, created the body. And I just feel, yeah, I've thought many, many times to apply to human rights commission say the fact that it doesn't have the power and authority accountability you know kind of like discourages me to apply so I, but it, i think it's a great concept yeah and i'm wondering how this will fit into the resident oversight board and also i don't know how long cswg is going to stay so i can see some you know all these um groups you know working together collaboratively to effect changes in this town okay yeah. That's just like, you know, my thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I think that we've struggled before with the fact of, um, as, as Audrey Lord put it, you know, dismantling the master's house with the master's tools, right? Um, so if you are um, trying to follow and you're set up to follow mass general law in a way that um, would allow you to have a closed door session only if in certain circumstances. So if you see that there's litigation that is coming forward, and you're speaking about that, um, you'd be able to have a closed door session, executive session. Um, if you do not have a reasonable belief that that's occurring, you can't. Um, so this is something that I, I brought up um, with our liaison at the time six years ago, Alyssa Brewer. Um, she was the Human Rights Commission liaison uh, in, in back in 2015, 16, 17. Um, and, you know, it's 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 not set up uh, in the way that it could be uh, in order to have more of an effect, and that's something that uh, you know we've talked about over the years as as revising the bylaws and so on. You know, I think what you're suggesting would have the effect of of doing that and having an entity, whether you call it the Human Rights Commission or you call it the um, a DEI body that is. Um, or, or the resident, um, you know, review board that that you um, have uh, in, in the plan. All of these are, are ways of getting to the heart of what the problems are. So, um, so thank you for again doing that work. So another thing is, are you guys compensated for your time at all? No. Not okay, that's something we need to also talk about at CSWG. I mean, I'm I'm not speaking for everybody, but this is a a body that is, you know, has some people of color on it. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I just want to be quick because I know that obviously we've kind of, um, you know, prolonged this for a while. You're all probably very tired. And of course, yeah. thank you all for sticking around. But I just know that Deborah had kind of made, um, you know, two other questions in terms of, and, and it's good that you brought those questions to us because it, it, then it's not clear in our report. So we wanna make sure that when we do the presentation that we clarify, because I know that in the report, when you ask about traffic violations, we did say that uh, Crest would be responding to anything that was non-violent, non-criminal, okay? So that would include um, anything, you know, in terms of uh, traffic violations and some other things, you know? So, but it might be that it has, it has to be in phases, right? Because in terms of those details that need to be worked out, um, but it is it is something that they would be responding to non-violent, um, non-criminal uh, types of issues. And then the other one was around um, if Crest is responding to these nonviolent, non-criminal um, types of, of, of calls, right? Because it would be anywhere from like 25 to about 35% of calls deal with these types of, of issues. It, you were saying, so what would happen to the police? Would they now have more police to be patrolling? And that's not our intent either. So it's good that you said that because it's not clear. Our intent is that obviously um, there's a decrease 
right in in the police because obviously there wouldn't there wouldn't there wouldn't be a need for them to be out there uh, doing that because now press would be dealing with uh, responding to those uh, issues, right? So I think you know it's good that you ask those questions because we need to be clear in in terms of our communication. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, does the group have any other questions at this time? Okay, um, I also want to personally thank you all for coming out tonight and for being very patient and waiting till the very end um, to get to your questions. All of your comments and feedback were, were very helpful um, and just learning more about what you guys do because I personally didn't know that much before this conversation. It seems like it may be um, important for us to stay in communication with you guys, especially for the second part of our charge, um, just to learn more about the history for what has worked in the past when the commission did have the ability to um, take the complaints and we're doing that process and what the, the real need is for the town of Amherst itself. Um, and so I think that, that those things would be good to be in communication with you guys moving forward. Um, and we appreciate you and your time today. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you all and your work too. And let us know what we can do to help. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Bye now. Okay, and we're coming towards the end of our meeting here. We just have a couple of things left on the agenda. Uh, so if it's all right with everybody, I'm just going to pass to Brianna so she can finish out the meeting. So the last two topics on our agenda is the, um, oh, everyone. I don't know if I accidentally did that or if they left or not. Um, oh, Tashina left. She apologizes. Deb Ferrer, I moved over. Okay. We have to be at least four people to, to form a quorum. Yeah, okay. you are. Okay, four. Nobody okay. should leave, please. Otherwise, the meeting will end. Please. Am I back? Am I back? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. I'll try to be brief because I know we're running over time too. What about, I didn't know if you guys wanted to hear from Terry. Oh, he's still here. Yeah, Terry's still here. Yeah. They are still here. Yes. Oh my God. Well, should we? Because if, yeah. if they're still on, if they're still on, it might not be a bad. It's here. Hi, Terry. You know I love a CSWG meeting. I'll always <laughs> say. <laughs> hey, at, at least you, uh, Terry, you can get your laundry done while you just listening. You can kind of eat. You can do everything while we're on. <laughs> we have patience. That I do. Um, so can someone remind me of exactly what you'd like me to comment on? I don't want to take up. No, I, I know that when you get, when you, one of your presentation, you had mentioned you researched at Kahoot and there was some uh, shooting even with mm -hmm. the program. So if you can just talk about that very briefly. Yeah, so it's kind of in line with kind of what you've been talking about, just that at the end of the day, adding more things doesn't change policing necessarily, and unless you change policing. Um, so CAHOOTS and Denver um, have both, both experienced police violence. There's still a lot of distrust of the police. Um, people won't won't call the police in Eugene. Um, they'll wait for Cress, that type of thing. So um, that's kind of what I was getting at. And so, and I think part of, and part of that is why it's so important to fully fund Cress. Um, and I think that's a good argument to fully fund Cress because it's not, you're not just using it as like, oh, we need more mental health resources. It's that we don't need a strong, a massive police force and we don't need community policing. Um, that any quality of life uh, thing that the police have been reacting to and being, at, I mean, they've been asked, like that's the other thing about policing is that they're not actually doing a bad job policing at all, like they're great cops, but 
what they're being asked to do isn't what people want or what we're realizing that we want is kind of like how I normally frame it. Um, and that's because community policing is, will always set up the cops to do the wrong thing because they're looking to be punitive. Like that's what, that's the tools that they have. Um, and that's their job, their law enforcement. They enforce the law. And so this the idea of Crest is to not enforce the law, it's to move money out of law enforcement, out of the punitive system and into something that can help people. Um, so that's what why I brought in kind of the examples that happened in Eugene and the continued examples that happened in Denver is that doing a small pilot or um, underfunding CRESS is, you're not gonna see any changes and possibly even just with CRESS alone, there also needs to be a conversation and working with like the town and um, like, I think the most hopeful thing was when Paul Bachelman said like, is community policing the right thing for Amherst? Like that's kind of where you want to be hitting because that's from the research that we did, it seems to be community policing where you're, you're having cops trying to make sure there are no disturbances and like keeping quality, uh, maintaining quality of life is where you see a lot of issues. Um, so like when they're maintaining quality of life for some people by pleasing other people. Um, and so the idea with Cress is that you stop asking the cops to do that under the guise of, oh, I'm helping this person with their mental health. Um, and you get someone who can help them with their mental health and not worry about the other people who might be being disturbed. Um, so that's kind of why I put that in there. Um, and I think that's kind of how one way you could use it, just that the idea of funding CRESS isn't just about funding CRESS, it's about rethinking community policing, uh, rethinking policing specifically community policing um, and trying to come up with something that does what the people and what is right by everyone and not just protecting a few. Thank you. Question, Terry, will you be joining us um, for the town council meeting? I think it would be powerful um, for the council members to hear seven gen's recommendations. I'm getting a little bit worried because Lynn Griesmer did email our group um, a list of questions. And one of the, in the questions, one of the questions was, um, what grants can we look for? And I, what I'm worried about is if we get grants, um, are they gonna fund CRESS and then keep police officers? Because if we don't decrease the amount of officers, the inequities in the town are still gonna continue to happen. So I'm, I'm just really concerned about that. And I'm wondering if you'd be able to join us for that presentation and sort of explain the CAHOOTS program and why our other recommendations are equally as important. Yeah, yeah, I will definitely. Okay. I will definitely be there. And I believe Seven Gen as a whole will be there as well. Very good, very good, good. Ms. Walker. Um, I just also wanted to add, because um, in addition to that question, there was actually a, an entire set of questions that the town council sent to us uh, just shortly before this meeting. There was one set for the CSWG, but another set specifically for 7Gen. Um, and so it would be very helpful probably to get those to you guys before our presentation um, because they have very specific questions that then we might be able to just present the answers to or find ways to make sure that they're included in our presentation. Yeah, and I think the other thing, just while I'm on here, I meant to come in for public comment. I'm so sorry. The meeting on the web, your website is Monday's meeting. So it says 6.30 and I didn't read it closely enough. Um, but it sounds like based on everything that we've heard tonight and just what you're all are saying, I think one thing you might really need to highlight is the need for the CSWG to um, continue and that's going to be tricky because you are the CSWG so like I know that's kind of a hard ask um, but I think it's really really important 
because everyone's like, who's going to oversee this um, change and who's going to like do all this stuff. Um, and it's, it should be you all. Like, you know this so much better than anyone else in the town at this point. And you've heard from so many different constituents. So um, I think kind of what the human rights, I mean, what everyone has said is just, just this need for your voices to continue in some capacity. And I think to me, it almost seems like that is the most attainable um, request and should be like, I just feel like you have to make sure that pushing Crest and pushing full funding and pushing um, your all's oversight of, of these activities as they go forward. Because I feel like you all know that it might not work out the way you want and the way we want it to. But if you, at least if you're in the room for the next year and in the next budget cycle, that so much more can happen. And you all know that. I mean, just how much you've all brought to the table for this budget cycle is huge. Imagine if you all had one more year, like at least it would be so powerful. So I think, and I hope the town council hears this and I hope they recognize the need of this guidance that you have all provided and really appreciate how much effort. And I mean, getting up at 6 a.m. to do this, to rush this so that you're treated with respect is so upsetting and frustrating. And I just, I don't think everyone, like I get why people are worried and want you to nail it down right now. But I think another way to go about this is to be like, this was ridiculous from the start we're gonna nail it down we just need more time is also reasonable and valid and should be heard so that was gonna again, be my public comment i'm sorry for taking your time but uh i just hope to see you all for much much longer in amherst because you all are honestly the driving force of this change so thank you uh, Ms. pat so um, Terry, your group, Seven Gen, I just, again, I can't thank you guys enough, you know, for the incredible amount of work you guys did and for superb, you know, report that you guys put together. And I'm looking forward for you guys, you know, helping with presenting on Monday. I'm so, so grateful. I also want to thank Defund Police, or what is that called? How they came out, you know, um, in full force on, on Monday, well organized and just made powerful, strong showing and, and testimony. I'm, I'm so, so grateful. So we have a lot of support with, the, with, with all the recommendations that you guys, you know, 7Gen help us to put together. Thank you, I'm so grateful. To you, to Dr. Shabazz, to Dr. Katie and to Dr. Sanjay, awesome team. And I, you know, I would like you know, the time to continue to do business with 7Gen because you guys know your stuff. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Walker. I apologize in advance just because I have already closed the agenda that was in front of me. So I don't know what, what, what we're supposed to be talking about right now. And I do realize that we are over time, but I am still looking at these questions that were sent to us from the town council. And I'm just wondering if there's any way that even we can briefly go over them just because we're going to have to answer all of these to the town council formally before we have another meeting with the entire group. And I don't know if anyone has like particular ways that they would like for us to answer these questions. Um, and then I'm also just looking at one very specific question that was posed to the CSWG, but it's about the CAHOOTS program. And I'm just not even sure entirely how we would answer these questions or if these are things that we can pass um, to 7Gen to see if that they can find a way to include those in their report or somehow, or if there's just, if we can get input from the group as to how you all would want us to move forward with answering these questions because they're they're going to have to be answered 
by or before Monday. Ms. Moisten. So can you see the questions up on the screen now? Yeah. Okay. And so I'll make them a little bigger because they're small. And seven gents, I just sent the questions over to you via email. So they should be in your box for you guys to view later. Um, but here are the questions. <clears throat> I, I'm wondering, you know, I'll make a suggestion for seven gen to help us with these questions. What would be my recommendation? We can all work together in a in a uh, Google Doc. Um, Miss Ferreira, and then I have a comment. Yeah, I mean, you know, we still haven't talked about the presentation. We haven't talked about the finance meeting. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if it's the best use of our time now to come sit here and look through all of these questions. You see what I'm saying? I mean, again, I think what we've heard throughout the, the, the whole time is that, yes, you know, we, we put together our recommendations. We put together, a, you know, uh, our presentation. We're going to be um, having, you know, some questions that we need to work out. I think the best way would be for us, again, to do it by email. I don't know. We, we have to answer these before Monday. Why can't we answer them on Monday? Again, I'm feeling rushed. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to like come up with all these things, you know, on the fly and it's not fair to us. You know, we can answer them on Monday. We can work on it over the weekend through email and we answer on Monday, you know, to them. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I mean, I'm, I I'm agree. not willing. I'm not oh, willing no. to go sit here for another hour to go answer these questions. I don't by the town council. It's it, uh, it's not happening. You know. They, the email reads attach for some initial questions from the town council regarding the report from the CWG and the seven gen research. It will be helpful, but only to the extent possible to weave the answers to the questions into the presentation. I don't know if that's helpful or not. No, it's still not but helpful. It's, it Again, seems like you don't have to, though, because it, she yeah, said only exactly. to the extent possible. So I, I don't know that these need to be weaved into the presentation for Monday. Yeah, we can we can work on it and we can answer it. These are questions, right? They're questions. Mm -hmm. We can pose them on Monday, you know, and we can answer them on Monday. I, 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 don't, I don't feel again. It's my only my voice. And, and, and so I guess my thing is this. If you all I, I need to go, <laughs> I guess that's the bottom line. I, I'm out. You all continue doing what you need to do because I need to work on the other questions, right? The report that that needs to get done so my thing is we need to stick to our agenda which was you know let's work on the present you know the presentation i don't even know have you all finalized that or not you see what i'm saying and 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 the questions we can work on it throughout the time but the, the, those are my th you're freezing oh, you're freezing but before you leave oh if she leaves we have to uh end the meeting we have to end the meeting because we have to have four people. Well, you can't make any votes. You guys can talk. You just can't make any votes. Deb, you're frozen, and I don't know if you can hear us or not. And can you shut, shut off your video? Oh, we can't hear you. I know this is when you wish the chat was on. Oh, the chat is not on. No, we can't have the chat. One thing I want to suggest that might make things a little bit easier is if um, Alicia and I meet with 7th Gen and we look over the questions and weave them into the presentation because the presentation is pretty done. It's a lot of pictures shared by group members and um, Alicia and I have started working on a script for each slide so we know what content to present where, but I think that we should work with 7th Gen to answer the questions. Didn't we say, are we, I guess the mode of, uh, of Monday. Didn't we say that each member will introduce themselves? Is that still happening or just you guys are talking throughout? Is that what so, it is? Yeah. So can you yeah, all I, hear me now or no? Oh, we can hear you. You froze again. Or oh, we could. Again, yeah. yeah. Oh.
Miss Pat, to answer your question, that was one of the things that I had under the um, the topics for the presentation. I wanted to see if everybody wanted to come to the meeting. I think in the beginning, we all should introduce ourselves. And okay, another. Is she frozen again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brand. Um, and then another question that I wanted to bring to the group, I assumed at the beginning, but I just wanted to double check. Lynn asked us if we want to present at the beginning of the town council meeting or at the end. I thought they only have us that day. I thought we're only meeting with them. They have other agenda that day. Um, let me double check the email, but I do recall I, her I asking. She said we can take as much time as we want on Monday. That's my understanding. I think that was for the FinCom meeting. Oh, oh okay. Miss Walker. Um, yeah, sorry. So I was just also going to say that's for the finance committee meeting. They posted a special meeting so that we could meet with the finance committee. Um, I'm not sure for the about the full agenda for the um, town council meeting. However, they did give us 45 minutes, no more, not to go over 45 minutes. Should we do it later or should we do it the first thing? Don't, don't. When um, the first thing okay. you should do it as soon as possible. I thought I received an email that said 6 30. Okay. That you guys were scheduled for 6 30. Okay. Okay. Let me double check that. But I definitely suggest that you go early. Their meetings go till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And then the, the folks are, you know, a little bit tired and hangry yeah. and whatnot. So um yeah, but let me look and see what. And then Terry, I'm so sorry that you had problems. I had originally posted all three meetings because we just had back to back and I was trying to get them out of the way, but then we didn't have any links to them because I have to use the counselor's links and they weren't posted yet. And so I think I, what I must have posted this meeting on Monday so, or Tuesday. So then I changed it to Monday. So I apologize that, that you didn't see that there, um, that it went back, but uh, please, you can, I can, um, just send those links to you guys to 7gen or continue to send you guys the links and then I'm looking for Lynn right uh, Miss Walker thank you so I know we lost Miss Ferreira but I, I actually agree with everything she said I just wanted a consensus from the group because we won't have another time to meet before so I just wanted to know if everybody's okay with me and Brianna me and Brianna meeting with seven gen and just coming up with the answers ourselves or if people wanted to have input I, I just wanted consensus as to that so if everybody's okay with me and Brianna meeting with seven gen to come up with answers or making sure that these things are answered to the best of our ability in our presentation I think that's something we can try to do but also um just keeping in mind that tomorrow is Friday and the meeting is Monday. So I don't know if 7Gen or if everyone will be able to meet this weekend or what everyone's schedule is. Okay, so, can I, I mean, we can make decisions. We're only three of us that I'm okay for two of you to work on it. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm there was a lot of talk about emails going back and forth. So I just have to stress, please don't send emails to everyone, right? Yes. Like this is like a high in the open meeting law it but it's but we're, we're just a high visible ability right now and i don't want to have any issues or anybody think that somehow oh, we've, so oh, that yeah. we're discredited and i have lynn's email but this one was from 519 so which was yesterday and i just want to make sure you didn't have an earlier one brie okay anna sorry no, it's oh, okay. hey, I'm back. Can you all hear me now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You know, I even tried to call in. I mean, this is ridiculous. But anyway, uh, no. So what are you all thinking about for now? Because like I said, I can't stay long. I'll stay just to kind of have quorum. But what, what are we trying to do here? We, we agree with you to work on. Um, actually, after you left, I think we're thinking mm -hmm. for the, the co-chair to work with someone, Jane on the school, on the town council questionnaire. Okay, okay, good. While you and Ross work on your stuff and I will submit my stuff tonight. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, okay. Do I, so, do I send it to you? Yeah, you send it to both of us, both of us, to, to Ross and, and me. Is that okay? 
can you just can you send it to me and like i'm pretty good at sending you guys the emails out when they come can okay. we because there's two oh. of you and i get a little we just get a little bit nervous it's not quite we just don't want any problems um disha i think it, i believe it is disha boss has her hand raised and so before um i let her speak I, I i just have a couple of things one the email that i'm reading at says that you guys will be on the agenda for 7 30 p.m or she's hoping to have you guys speak for 7 30. So oh. their meeting starts at 6.30. Okay. So that's an hour into their meeting. However, anything could happen. Oh no, she took her hand down. Um, also, I'm I'm like really confused and I'm sorry. And I can check in with Paul about this tomorrow because I don't understand this level of detail all of a sudden that needs to be done. And since none of this is gonna happen tomorrow, like the Crest program isn't gonna be installed in tomorrow, I'm not quite sure why you guys can't wait so can i can i just do a little bit of um checking in with paul and see what that's about because i it doesn't make any sense to me yeah it, it really doesn't and you know i'll text him in a little bit but i, I it doesn't make sense to, i don't understand that so that was my question today the, the questions from town council no, just the level of detail that we have to provide yeah. along press, like so quickly, like we have to do it, have to have all the answers in terms of how great the program is going to be now. I'm but like, I, yeah, I don't understand who's asking for that, because from my understanding is this, the group that Paul has created and members from the CSWG are supposed to fill in that detail. So I don't really understand the detail, if that makes sense, um, as time, so I, I let me just check in with Paul. Um, I'll try and send. I'll send him a text and ask him about that because that doesn't. Um, so, I don't. I don't understand that. So I think I remember a conversation in one of our meetings where we said it would be nice for the school for the town council to give us some, you know, their questions ahead of time, so that we can prepare. Isn't that the question that they forwarded to us? Um, That's what it was, but I don't think that you know we can realistically hand it over to them before the meeting on Monday. But we can prepare and have our representative, you know, deliver it, you know, like explain it, present it to to them on Monday. I think we we initiated that CSWG. We initiated that for them to give us uh, quest their questions so that we can be prepared. So I think you guys can answer those questions without it being, I mean, but I, I'm so sorry, Deb, Ms. Freire, go ahead. No, I mean, I think, I think uh, what I thought what you were asking, uh, Ms. Moisson, was more so around why we having to, pre to present this level of detail. Right, because mm -hmm. remember the, the document that that Russ and I are going to be working on is is providing a whole other level of detail. I don't. I, you're right, Miss Pat. The questions we did initiate the questions. We asked them. You know, are there any questions so we can think about beforehand? But for me, I wasn't planning to answer those questions before Monday. Yeah, give us those questions so that we can have it right and be ready and prepared to respond to them. But I'm not trying to answer it before Monday because Monday is when I'm presenting to you. You see what I'm saying? So, so for me, those are the two things. Why are we presenting this level of detail about the program? And two, great, thank you for the questions, but I'll answer them on Monday. Thank you for so that I can we can have forethought on it and we can be prepared. But that doesn't mean I need to submit it to you before Monday. We're not submitting no. anything. We're not going to submit anything. And but I also yeah. don't think they're asking you to submit the questions by before Monday. That's not what okay. they're asking. They want them, if possible, implemented yeah. into the presentation. Yeah. So they don't, uh, I think the, so that's not an issue. And, and, and actually I should look at, again at the questions cause I'm not quite sure, but some of them seems like you guys could answer within the presentation if it's not already there yeah. and they just didn't really see that. But um, yeah, I'm emailing Paul now or I'm texting Paul now cause no, I just, I don't understand the detail. Is that Dr. Dr. D, Dr. Shabazz? Did she wait, 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 wait. Before, before, before Dr. Shabazz um, comes in, please, because I'm going to be leaving, is um, what are we doing? I mean, uh, do you all need the co-chairs? I know you all are presenting. I know we're all going to be there, but do you need anything from us in terms of the presentation? I haven't seen the final presentation, so I don't even know you know, the full thing. So I'm kind of like, do you need anything from us for the presentation? 
for the town council. And then we also have the presentation for the fin finance committee. Do you need anything from us from that? Are we expected to speak at it? You want help answering questions? I think for me, that's more the critical thing so that I can kind of be prepared for Monday. So for Monday, um, you guys have all given, well, you guys have all sent me pictures to help um, with the visual with the visual part of the presentation for Monday. So our presentation is for the most part, our recommendations, um, sort of a build up pictures from that you all shared. And I can share that with you guys um, tonight after this meeting. Um, I think it would be, I, other group members, I think we agreed for everybody to be at the presentation. I would like every group member to introduce themselves in the beginning of the presentation. So the town council can put um, a face to the name and sort of know us a little bit and also I would want group members to stay to answer questions at the end if you all are comfortable with that okay all right so you all you all are comfortable with doing the presentation itself you're, yeah. you're set with that okay and then for the finance committee one of Lynn's questions was whether or not um, CSWG members were coming with um, Alicia and I so um for the finance committee, what Lynn sent me last was that this presentation should be shorter. The finance committee will have already heard our recommendations at the town council meeting and have those have the presentation, the materials in their packet, and that that presentation should more so be about CRESS. Mm -hmm. And we'll be there oh, for me. that what too, right? What? For, for the um, uh, finance committee, why only CRESS? So that was my question for this evening, and I was a little bit disappointed. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay. Alicia wants to speak. I will, I will wait. No, 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 no. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, I just have a couple of quick comments. Um, one, I just wanted to say, like, yes, Ms. Moisson, I would like for you to ask Mr. Bachman. I think that's very helpful because I was also confused about that. And some of these we can absolutely answer. And I think some of them are already answered in our presentation. But there are like certain one, certain questions like, for example, if Crest were to be phased, what would be the minimum staffing to start in the first year? Like, I'm just not sure how I am supposed to answer that question. I, I'll answer that. Right, and so I would just be un uncomfortable answering on behalf of the group without any group input beforehand. So that was the reason why I brought it up um, at this meeting. But I think like now also hearing what everybody else is saying that it's not the end all be all if we don't have the answer to every single one of these questions. So that was just my only concern and I don't wanna lose credibility because these are the questions that people have that is putting them in the gray area. So like if it's a, a matter of whether or not a person is in support of us, like whether or not they have an answer to this question, then I would like to, to provide them with an answer if yeah. that is the barrier. So that was my question, but I think we're solved on that. And then also, um, oh, sorry, I lost the second half of my. Okay. Oh, for the presentation, I was thinking, have everybody come and talk and that we would maybe just have one prompting question that we could all answer like, uh, why you joined the group or why this is important to you, just something that you could talk for like one minute very quickly before the presentation. Um, and maybe Brianna and I can come up with a specific question and send it out to everybody just to like narrow down the talking space, but we want it to be personal and whatever you feel like sharing. Um, and there was something else, but I forget. So I will just pass it to Miss Pat. Okay, so um, the fact that you know, finance committee only wants to hear for uh, uh, only Christ. I don't agree with that. They have to listen to all our budget because I mean, this is power dynamics. You have white folks selling BIPOC uh, uh, board that was appointed for us not to do all our presentation. I don't agree with that. Yeah. So to kind of, yeah, that was my question coming into the no, meeting no, no, tonight. No, no, and, I, no. and I assumed that Mr. Bockelman would be here to answer it. I, I'm gonna read the email from Lynn, the line that's most important. She said, I urge that the presentation to the finance committee be much shorter and focus on the item in the budget, community services, social services, community responders. There are a lot of details that need to be developed around this program and you should not be expected to provide all of them. So I was hoping at this meeting, Mr. Bockelman could provide clarity as to whether we are presenting just the crest or all three or the details. That's the part that I'm confused about. So I, I'm just I, gonna say that I don't know how you, we changed the meetings to Thursday and he wasn't here. I don't think that he was here when we did that. And he already had, has a standing pre something that he was already doing. So I don't know 
how many times he I don't know how often he'll be on a Thursday meeting like he'll be at next Wednesdays but I don't know that he'll be at Thursdays and oh. I would just say present everything at once to the finance committee yeah that's what I would say too. That, that, that's a, yeah can we can we take a vote right now let's take a vote right I don't we, think you oh, need to take a vote on that just, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. hey. don't make me do a motion yeah yeah, I think I think we just need to we just need to present everything for the finance committee, present our recommendations, you know, because that's that's what we're asking for. And we can iron out and answer any questions in regards to our recommendations, not just Chris. Can I propose that, you know, uh, our coach here send an email to them what we're planning to do to them because we'll be, we'll be presenting the whole, you know, budget so that it won't be a surprise to them. To yeah. who? To the FinCom? Yeah. Fin yeah. Finance Committee. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You don't know what? I don't know. I'm being recorded. I can't say anything. So, um, I, no, you should tell them. But I, listen, I think that it's very important that anytime that you guys present this, your recommendations, that you present all of the recommendations. They cannot because even though like tomorrow we're not going to set up a BIPOC multicultural center, it has to be part of the plan moving exactly. forward. You can't exactly. take one without the other. You absolutely yeah. have to take them all at one time so yeah. that you can do like a blueprint. Right. Yeah. And so I, that's, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that has to be, and that has to be documented. It has to be put in that that's what we want is for them to put a timeline, the blueprint, the, the when are, are certain things going to get done, the objectives, the goals by when and so on and so forth. And that's when and that's where Matthew from Human Rights Commission was very clear about which we have to think about. Right. It's six years from now. Let, let's say we all move move away from Amherst and there's another group that's doing this work. What are they going to look at? Right. That's that the time what are they about? Exactly. Yeah. What did the town agree to? What did we recommend? And, and the, another group has to be able to look at that and then move forward with it. So that's why it's very important that we bring up our, all our recommendations and, and talk about the budget in total, not just Crest. Yeah. Because, like for, you know, for white dominated board to tell BIPOC board what to do is unacceptable. They yeah. are elected folks. They can be replaced. Yeah. So it's unacceptable, period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Miss Walker. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I just remembered the last thing I was going to say. So I actually I agree with what everyone's saying. I think we should um, present all of our recommendations and all of our budgets to the finance committee as well. I think the idea, the reason why people just wanted the Crest program is because that's the only thing that's already in the budget. Um, and so that's why they wanted us to only speak to that. Um, but so the document that Deborah and Russ are working on, I think that was more geared towards going to our finance committee meeting and less geared towards the presentation that we'd be giving to the town council. Mm. So that means then if, if, if we're providing more detail about press, then we'd have to be providing more detail about the other programs too. That's right. That's right. Because that's the thing. I mean, we can't just because we already know that them just... Uh, uh, doing the line item of 130 for Crest, that was abominable. That was an in insult, you know? It was an insult to all of us because there you go. Oh, and they did 30,000, right? To a coordinator for for equity and inclusion. We can't forget that too. That That's abominable too. So that's the thing that we have to basically point out is just like, okay, we're providing, if you want uh, answers to questions, it has to be answers to questions to, towards everything. Because if we give them an inch, they'll take them out. If we just focus on Crest, that's the only thing they'll focus on. They'll focus, right. they'll not that's focus right. on anything that's else. Right. Yeah. I yeah. just, Brianna, I think that you should put, when you respond to Lynn or to the finance committee or whomever, I think you need to explain that you can't just take one, right? Like you mm -hmm. have to take the whole thing. And we it. understand that you're not going to make all of the changes or fund everything at this moment. We understand that, but you can't take just a piece of it you have to take the whole thing it, well you know what I, I mean? but miss moisten i would i would i wouldn't even put that there we understand that you're not going to fund it oh, oh you don't have to understand no, you don't have no, to put no, that exactly. saying, all we're going to say is that hey listen we're going to be doing our whole budget because this is That's what we plan. Plan. this is what we this is what oh, this community yeah. needs no i, you know I get I mean? that because I again that. i mean this is what 
I mean, Paul was the one that made those, those recommendations. We're trying to overthrow that. We're trying to be like, no, we want some funding to go through towards these programs. Right. So if we go into the whole thing by saying that we understand that you can't fund it, then they're gonna be like, okay, then you're in agreement with it. Uh -uh. Yeah, nope. I'm forgetting where we're at with that. So, but you're right yeah. about that. No, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. you, you definitely should let them know they can't take one without the other. Yeah, exactly. Have to, yeah, it has to be equal, not just press alone. All of them are, are all equally important. That's the way we're going exactly. to present it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I can definitely respond to Lynn then and let her know that ahead of time too. That's what I was confused about. And I was, I kind of felt like the way that we are being pressed for details on Crest was their way of ignoring our other recommendations. But mm -hmm. when I attended the town council meeting, there was support from the community for not just the Crest program, but all of our recommendations. Exactly. But so who's asking that for the detail? I think for the finance committee right now, I, now I'm getting it because I wasn't understanding that either. So the thing the that- that Russ and I are working on is deep for the detail for the finance committee, right? That's what you were saying, Brianna? Yeah. yeah. But they want detail and in, in, in the way, I mean, like, honestly, it's the finance committee. So the, they should only be concerned with the funds. Mm -hmm. And I, th I felt like there was a pressure on our group to come up with detail because they gave us such little money. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so details so that they can fee they can, and you know, say, okay, we do have to give so you more money for this purpose. Raising she's still here. Still well, she doesn't have her hand raised. Huh? She doesn't have her hand raised. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, Miss Walker has her hand raised. Okay. Sorry. Um, thank you. So I was just commenting also towards the finance committee meeting. So I just think they wanted more detail because we have to explain to them the need for the increased budget. So that's where the detail was coming into play. Um, but then that also leads me to have questions about if we're going to be presenting the need for money and funding for all of our recommendations, then will they be looking for detail from those as well? Or because they already haven't given us anything, just what we have will be enough to ask for something? There's not, there's not much detail, at least for the multicultural center. I think it was already explained the staffing, what the services is going mm -hmm. to look like. So um, that's very straightforward. I think the most complicated one is press. But um, to me, it's not because I'm, I'm in mental health field. I'm, I'm also, I've had experiences with developing programs. Um, so I don't know what kind of details they need for multicultural or the youth center. We just present, you know, what we wrote. That's it. Yeah. I don't, I think the crest is pretty self-explanatory. Like, I don't know. I don't, um, yeah, I don't know. But I think, I think it's because it encroaches upon what the police does. I think that's going to be the, the big thing, the sticky point, right? So right. I think but that's the, probably why they, they want more details because of that reason. The counter is the police shouldn't be doing mental health work, yeah. right? Isn't that that's well, the whole purpose? Though, but, but but I think that's the thing that we got to be clear on. It's not just mental health work, right? You know it's not. Saying? But so. but that's the bigger piece, and so yeah. I it just seems like that is the level of detail right there. Like they, you, the police officers shouldn't. They're not social workers, right? And so they shouldn't yeah. be dealing with A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. Why would we have them deal with A, B, C, and D if? Mm -hmm. So I have a question for the coaches. What? What do you need from, from the rest of the CSWG members? What do you need from us? How can we support, you know, support you guys? So the only things that I wanted to bring up tonight is what you guys already answered to see if you guys would be um, able to come to the town council meeting and be a part of the presentation and set up some sort of prompt um, so everybody gets a chance to talk and then to see whether or not members wanted to come to the finance committee meeting. I'm yeah. planning to attend both. Yeah, me too. I'm planning to attend both. Yeah, and I think I think what would be helpful is just kind of whatever you all need from us, just send an email to all of us. And then I this I can already, you know, be thinking, figure out whatever prompt you want. You know, if you all are the co-chairs, just put out the prompt and then we'll think about it. And then say to us that to be prepared to also help answer questions and everything. And then and then have a way of how you're gonna do that, right? Because you all are the co-chairs. So the questions are gonna come to you because we don't want it to be a, a a free-for-all, right? Where we're kind of interjecting both 
two people are going to talk or whatever. So what you want to do is also in your email, explain to us how you want that done, right? That the town council will present the questions to the two of you, right? And then if you don't want to answer it, or if you feel like someone else in our group would probably be better answer it, just then open it up and say, hey, is it, maybe one of the other members of CSWG will be willing to answer this one. And then whomever, right? Ms. Pat, myself, Mr. Vernon Jones will jump in. But, but, but the question just, so just have a format, just say, hey, when they present the question, it comes to us first, either we're going to answer it or we're going to you know, we're going to open it up to the rest of the CSWG members, because then we know, as opposed to us staying there, kind of like, okay, should we answer? Should we not? And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just, just put that all in an email and then, and then we got you because this is a, this is a group effort. Yeah. I'm just don't Marston. reply all, please. <laughs> and Ms. Marston is very good. No, at no, no, we won't reply all. It will be just them sending it to us and including you on it, Jennifer. Okay. But then, yeah. I just don't yeah. reply all. No, we won't. Yeah. If, if anything, if I reply, I'll just, I can reply though to Rihanna and um, Alicia and then see yes. you like we usually yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's so, sure. when you do it like that, sometimes people are so quick to hit just reply all. And, and so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good reminder. Thank you. So I want to thank the coaches. Like, I know this has been a very stressful month, you know, for everyone, especially for two of you in particular. So, you know, I'm here for your support. If you ever want to, you know, just reach out to me. Um, care, you know, self-care is very important in this work that we're doing. Very, very important. Oh, wait, I got it, right? Not only do we need to go have margaritas when this is all done, but like... <laughs> Just a little, yeah, little zen, yes, a little zen right? <laughs> a little zen. But, uh, but me too, Brianna and uh, Alicia, thank you all. As they say, you know, uh, and I'll say it, you know, the younger generation, right? You all are not the leaders of tomorrow. You're the leaders of today. So thank you for being the leaders. And, you know, and, we, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do this. This is very needed. This is critical. We have to do this right now. You know, it's not anything that, can wait, um, people, as, as we know, there's so much pain already, and this is something that, that needs to happen. So for us, we just have to stand in that truth, right? And speaking, as they say, speaking truth to power. And that's what we gotta keep on remembering, right? So that folks are not just pushing us around and saying, well, you know, like we're gonna be jumping through hoops or, or we're, you know, like we're puppets and stuff. No, 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 no. We gotta stay focused and, and make sure that, that that's the way we do it. And at the end of the day, let's say the town council poses a question and we don't have a, the answer because again, we we were, we were did our charge, right? Which was to make the recommendations based on all the research. We might not have all the answers. Then we say, hey, we won't get, we, you know, we won't, we don't have a response today, but we'll get it to you, you that's know, right. afterwards. And that's the way we respond to it. And we move on from there because again, this was a tall order. We heard all the community members that we spoke with today, they told us that right? We've done so much in such a short period of time. What we need to do is pat ourselves on the back and feel very <laughs> proud and do what we can at this moment. And we'll be ready. We'll be ready on Monday. Okay. And, we, you know, I'm repeating what um, um, Deborah said. If they, if they ask us questions we don't have immediate answer for, we can get back to them. Right? Exactly. Okay, how are you guys feeling? The two coaches. Are you <laughs> Good. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> I feel a lot better about this than I did before. There's just a lot um, happening right now. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, and I want, I worry about representing the entire group. And so I just always have hesitation in moving forward without feedback from everybody. So this is just reassuring. Oh, good. <laughs> so thank you guys. Good. Alicia, you <laughs> represent the group well when you speak. Um, yeah. I just have a couple of logistical questions because we've got like back to back meet. You guys just back to back meetings next week. So we're meeting on Monday. That's the meeting I'll post because there'll be yeah. a quorum of you. And then you guys are meeting on Wednesday for your regular scheduled meeting, correct? Well, and I that time was, is. Isn't it Thursday? No, FinCom is Thursday. Oh, all right. So good thing you pointed that out because I was thinking it was. <laughs> Can I it's at six, right? It's at six o'clock on Wednesday. It's, it's at six o'clock on, on Wednesday. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, and then FinCom is six thirty. I don't know. I think there are uh -huh. six also, and they six. Mm. Not sure. 
I don't know. I can go back to, uh, there's an email that Lynn sent out about choosing the time, but I'll look at another meeting because yeah. that's how we figured it out. I just need to know. I'd rather just post it all tomorrow and just, you know. Okay. Sounds good. All right, folks. I, I have to definitely go. I have my, my son over here looking at me and giving me some dirty looks. Do we, do so. we really, a quick question. Do we really want to meet next week on our regular meeting since we have two meetings next week? But you guys will need to. Right. After the present, you're like, because when you meet with the town council, whatever gaps or whatever that happens there, you'll be able to degret like to figure out in that meeting to present it to the FinCon the next so, day. So we we only have two meetings next week, not our regular meeting. No, you have three meetings next week. That's what I'm trying to say. Can we just not do our regular meeting next week? Oh. Well. But that's what, but that's what Jennifer is saying. She's saying that we do need it because between the town council and the fi finance committee, we might need to kind of regroup based on whatever questions we get and, you know, and things like that, you know, we might need to regroup and kind of be really ready for the, for the finance committee uh, meeting. Yeah. So I then, mean, so then when, are you, guys, but... when are you proposing that we meet though, Jennifer, because now we're meeting Monday, then we're meeting Wednesday. So you're saying we meet Tuesday? No, you meet Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I thought the finance committee meeting was on Wednesday. When is it? <laughs> no, the I'm finance committee's I know. So Monday, you guys have town council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, you have your regular scheduled meeting at 6 p.m. Okay. And Thursday's town council. I mean, it makes oh. sense if you guys don't want to. I mean, it's town council oh. and FinCom. The finance. So, okay, got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm fine with that. But just can you send something? Because I, I was totally confused. About I, 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 I don't want people to burn out. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. see the need for us to meet on when, on Wednesday if people don't mind. Um, I would like to propose Monday and, and Thursday next week only. It's up to you guys. It really is. Uh, Sorry, I just thank you. Um, I'm, I'm okay with not meeting if that's what everybody else wants to do. Um, but before Ms. Pat said that I was going to suggest that if we just do a light meeting, like just have one thing on the agenda, any questions or comments in regards to the um, presentation on Monday, since we won't have time to regroup afterward, and maybe just have it be a brief discussion and follow up on that and not an entire full meeting if that's possible. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I think it would be important to meet at least from six to seven on Wednesday. Why okay. don't we just put it like one issue, which is just kind of like, you know, debrief. whatever other things, yeah, debrief and any other things we need to kind of talk about in preparation for the for the finance committee. Okay, so no agenda. Yeah. No, well, there's That's always an agenda. agenda. Well, the agenda. agenda item. It's just like one that. item is debrief from you know. Got you. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. I won't send no minutes because you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, folks, I'm gonna go. Thank you all. Bye bye. I'll move the meeting. Bye. I'll move the meeting to closure. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Miss Pat. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Bye.